Hello, and welcome back to another session of Stardust Rhapsody. We would absolutely love it if you could like this video, subscribe to our channel, and check that bell so you never miss an episode. And while you're doing that, I'm going to read some quotes from episode three. Quote number one. So, I'm not a big sci-fi person. I prefer fantasy. But Mace does an incredible job making me love every moment of the series. And fascinated by his world and how it works. Good job, Mace. Good job, That's Mace. the power of science comments. fantasy. Quote number two. I agree. I am so excited for a new episode. This is probably my favorite group of characters to see interact with each other. Thank you. Quote number three. As soon as the teaser for this campaign dropped, I was so stoked for Space Odyssey, specifically the 80s style intro and the music. It's been a delight so far. Thank you. Thank you. And quote number Thank four. You. Someone in the live chat was surprised that Chuckle did something wholesome. But that's what clowns do. Entertain and delight children and horrify and torment adults. The duality <laughs> of the clown. So, make good. sure you leave some comments below. And maybe yours will be read uh -huh. next session. Uh, in the meantime, make sure you check out our merch shop and uh, buy some really awesome merch. Join our Patreon to become a patron and enjoy our brand new Patreon-only campaign called Shroud Over Salt Marsh. And lastly, visit thecrookedmoon.com today to pre-order your copy of The Crooked Moon. Thank you. And now everybody, it's that time again to don your sunglasses, pick up your instruments, and lend your cosmic chorus to our Stardust Rhapsody. Let's jam. Some say the universe is a song. That all things are made from the same stuff as the stars and that every life is a note in the music of existence that echoes through infinity. So when you feel insignificant and alone, just remember, we're all irreplaceable parts of that grand cosmic melody, the Stardust Rhapsody. Space, the endless expanse. <clears throat> Purpose and power are there for the taking for all those who dare, even a rabid armadillo. Though those who claim power quickly can be parted from it just as fast. In space, there are few things more dangerous than trifling with elements you don't understand. The Rhapsody confronted Mad Dog Derry and swiftly put him down. In the wake of the destruction of the junkyard, in the wake of the destruction, the junkyard was leveled by an all-consuming ether explosion. Rhett, knowing that they can't leave this power behind, quickly fashioned a box that would hold the core safely. So he believes. Labouche, extending from the ship, secured this unknown power. As Rhett called Kilivax to explore turning in the bounty, he watched as a long-trusted ally was cut down in an eerily familiar fashion. A cursed treasure they cannot claim, and a power they don't understand. What comes next for the crew of the Rhapsody? Rhett, you're seated at your console. You hear the familiar crackle of a dead line as the screen in front of you turns to snow. Your call disconnected. Ah. Fuck! Ah. 
We gotta... We gotta get this thing fucking far away from here. Uh, I'm gonna... I'll just... I'll jump up and I'll... I'll sort of immediately, uh... Uh, kind of, unless anyone stops me, I'm just gonna walk to the, all of them to walk to the cockpit. Was this you and Pike that were watching it? Yeah. To set the stage, uh, once again, really quick, I believe that as you had all come in from, uh, the, the junkyard, uh, you relaxed for a bit. You had a drink, you unwound, you did what you would normally do after what can be classified as a successful mission. Uh, most went to bed wrapped up for the evening when you and Pike mm. walked to the cockpit or wherever you would make the call. Oh, the I thought they were watch. playing Donkey Kong. <laughs> 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 uh, uh, they were playing Big Funkus 64. They were playing Big Funkus 64. I thought we'll like we were all in the same room, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I just walked to the side. I also thought it was just you. It's just us, that's fine. To set the new stage, you and Pike are in the control room as this call hangs up. Uh... Everyone else at this point has gone to bed. With uh, with Rhett's outburst, I'll look to him and I'll say, "This is bad. This is real bad. Uh, how the fuck did they find it? I thought we got fucking dumb lucky, but no, how? I should have known. How sure are you that?" They know we have this thing. I mean, it's fucking impossible to know. But if they go to the planet and they find that fucking crater, they're going to know what the hell caused it. You would also recall that in the conversation with Kilovax, he had mentioned, he asked you if you had successfully completed the bounty and he had mentioned that he had cleared that from the logs. Maybe... If Kilovax is no longer with us, his last act was a selfless one. Then we need to make sure we put as much distance between us and them as we possibly can. Oh, where do we even fucking go, though? I mean, Gruncorp has all the fucking resources. They got more credits than the fucking Empire. We gotta lay low. Nowhere high profile. Nowhere high population. We gotta look at our options. At the very least, let's gather the crew and let them know what's going on. All right. We'll steer clear of any ether stations and, uh... I mean, I don't even... I don't even know who I could ask. I think to, like, do, do I happen to know of anyone that, like... that I feel like I could call that is sort of similarly on the outside of... the corporation? Um, that, or, or maybe that's, like, still inside but friendly to me? Is there anyone like that, or is it sort of... Hmm. I'll leave it up to you. I would say, as of right now, you don't feel like there's anyone you would be able to turn to. I don't think so. That is in or outside of Gruncorp. What's our supply station look like? Uh, are we going to be alright, or are we in dire need? If we have to stop somewhere, we're going to have to pick carefully. Well, thanks to Chuckle's fucking signature, the boss hooked us up pretty well. I think we'll... And that wasn't too long ago. <laughs> that was like a week ago. You're doing okay. You're doing okay. <laughs> We're doing okay. We're doing okay. <laughs> um, I, 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 I mean, do we still need to fucking look for Rex? I don't think it makes sense chasing after him. He'll show up when he's meant to. For all we know, he's halfway across the galaxy. Yeah, you're right. You're right. 
You're right. Oh, and, uh... Rhett? Yeah. Try to keep your chin up about Kilovax. He's tough. Yeah, 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 but, uh... I have a feeling he ain't gonna make it long. I hope I'm wrong. I would start to maybe lead us or make my way back to where everyone else is to see if we can fill everybody in on what's going on. Yeah. <clears throat> I'll follow Pike. You do so. Uh, you start to, you leave the, the comm center, you start to move into the lounge and maybe even uh, Rhett, you would hit the familiar uh, call to, to action, the whirring lights to gather the team together uh, to talk about what's next. Uh, and as you do so, Kavir, as you sleep, uh, it's not uncommon for you to dream. Uh, it, it comes to you often. But tonight, as the chaotic energies of Chuckles wane from you, the Sandman appears faster than most other nights. You see yourself in a cave, well lit, almost like lights dancing off of bronze walls. You look out on a scene of yourself, sitting cross-legged on a smooth stone. Across from you sits a man, larger but slender, whose long white hair seems to rise into towards the ceiling like fire. But it doesn't dance as much as it seems to pour upwards. The hourglass lays in the sand between you. He speaks to you in the dream, but you can't hear the words as he speaks to your dream version, and you just look on. You listen for a while through the dream, but it's silent. You watch the conversation carry on for several more minutes, until, growing bored, you feel yourself on the verge of waking, and you hear a voice finally speak out. You look forward, and the figure no longer looking at the dream version of you sitting on the stone seems to stare directly at you and says, time runs out for us all. You awaken. Do I, having witnessed that scene, recognize it as something that's happened in the past? It does feel very familiar. You would think back to the moments in the desert when you had first gotten your powers and what that looked like. And that was very much the scene in which Zaman had bestowed them upon you for the first time. I'm gonna sort of shake myself off. Um, awake, kind of rub the sleep out of my eyes and look over at the hourglass for a moment. And uh, is there any activity on the hourglass? Is it glowing in any way? Is it? It is dull. It's since dormant. I'm gonna register and sort of just pocket what's happened. Um, but it's, it's given me as an uneasy feeling. Um, and I'm gonna sort of get myself stretched out and ready and, and just kind of start heading into the, the common area. Just a feeling of uneasiness is gonna sit inside me now. Mm -hmm. And so I'll make it out and I'm just assuming you guys are out in the common uh, area? Yeah. yeah, yeah, like I, I would have hit whatever button mm -hmm. would have been like whoop, yep. whoop. You summon the whoop, 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 <laughs> whoop, 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 whoop. What's uh? <laughs> doors swing open as the crew uh, enters the lounge area. What's, uh, what's happening? With, uh, we were only asleep for what felt like a few minutes. Well, 
We got a problem. You pause your damn game. <laughs> oh no, the dandy. <laughs> <laughs> He's still playing the game. Yeah, you're oh, playing fucking you're funky. Funky. You never went to bed. I did. You're, you're yeah, asleep. everyone was telling you to go to bed, but you couldn't stop playing I'm funky. Right here, I oh, yeah, see, see, no, no, you're trying to get the chartreuse bananas, but you're playing big funkus. You need to go swap to big goobas, and then you can get the bananas. I know it's a lot of backtracking, but there's a lot of charm to it. Charles, all that I want is the mushrooms. Well, there's no mushrooms in this game. So it's all bananas. They're all space the monkeys right and there. space monkeys. Uh -huh. The pomegranate. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that what mushrooms look like? I know what mushrooms look like. Okay, I was gonna say that'd be a really weird mushroom pizza. Oh, anyway. Chuckles, look over there. I win! Oh. Uh, is Labouche there? Yeah, yeah I, 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 I would have come in shortly after here. <sighs> well, uh, <clears throat> they got killed, Max. What, what do you mean they, and, and how did they get him? They being Gruncorp. Uh, and I, I try not to talk about it too much, but uh, Gruncorp is the uh, biggest Aether Dwarf corporation. Uh, they R&D pretty much all the tech that all the Aether Dwarves use and sell to the highest bidder. And, uh, I guess they got word about this bounty. So what I'm trying to fucking say is we have a goddamn dangerous payload on this ship. Do they know we have it? That's the thing. Right before they got him, Kilovax told me that he cleared the logs. And that there's no record of us taking the job or even doing it. Now, <clears throat> we have two options. One is uh, we just bail the thing and let them get it and try to get the fuck away. Second option is if we want to keep it out of their hands. And we keep it. But I can't in good conscience do that without getting buy-in from all of you. That things just got a lot more dangerous. Whatever we decide to do, Kilovax bought us time. So let's not waste it. It seems if Gruncorp got hold of it, then that's worst case scenario? I mean, it's hard to say. It's not as advanced as Ether Dwarf Tech, given that it's Imperial, you know, mimicry, so to speak. But, I mean, it's hard to say what they're going to do with it. What would they dispose of it? And give us the fat bounty, maybe, of the reward? Saying, oh, we found this about around a bunch of dead junkyard dogs. <laughs> Here you go. And then they'll be so excited and they'll destroy it. They're not going to... They, I mean, you know, they, they wouldn't want the Empire to get their hands on tech like that. What concerns me is when they're destroying that thing, they also decide to destroy anyone who knows about it. Oh, exactly right. What if we do the opposite of what Chuckle suggested and uh, sell it to the Empire? <gasps> the boosh. That's the opposite of what I just said. <laughs> sell it back to the Empire. They might kill us for having it also. Because well, it was theirs. They'll do much worse. Well, it's it's complicated, right? I mean, it's beyond the fucking technological... Technological... Uh, boundaries or fucking bureaucratic guidelines of the Empire, and that's why this thing was done underground by some sort of rogue uh, engineer or, uh, you know, it was definitely not above board. And so, if we sold it to the Empire, they'd probably kill us on site too and also destroy it. Uh, if we could find who made it or who engineered it, 
We could sell it back to them, but given the state of the ship, we found it in. They'd also probably question and torture me for many months. Be a long time dying. Can we use this thing? Maybe in the Grand Prix? I had some ideas, but let me consult with the Dungeon Master first. A, another slight <laughs> smile peeks at the corner of Pike's mouth as Dandy uh, uh, mentions this. I'm so glad you asked. We have enough pizza. We don't need to sell it. <laughs> One session. One session's all I ask. <laughs> Roll. Roll. You will never get it. Roll. It wasn't me. You will never get it. Roll a technician's check. Good. Roll a space engineer's check. This is like an engineering tools. Uh, I'm gonna twist this. I'm twisting it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Thank we got you. a lot of. Well, it's one better. Sometimes. Seventeen. Better. Oh. oh. <laughs> Artificers. And twist With a checks. Seventeen. You know that this is uncured aether core energy. Uh, like a an attempt to replicate what Gruncore might create. You've dealt with stuff like this before, and you think that if you, with the right balance and extreme caution, were to approach it with a clear plan, uh, you could come up with some things you could possibly use it for. I got some ideas, like I said, and... Uh... I mean, really, what ether is, right? It's the fifth element. It's the stuff that makes up reality. It's gravitons, it's, it's matter. And uh, any attempt to wield it or harness, it's very dangerous, but also very powerful. So if I have some time to tinker with it and you know, play around with it, I think I could Harness it in some way. You lost me at Graviton. <laughs> <laughs> and that's okay, Dandy. <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> I'll be honest, weighing all the options, to me at least, it sounds like us keeping it, you working with it, is the least chance of us dying. As long as we don't get caught. Or Red doesn't kill us. <laughs> that too. <laughs> Plus, uh, Kavir, uh, this is kind of your territory, but what do you even do with something that hot? How do you move something like that? You know, we're not peddling that to some average buyer. No, but it's all about finding the right one. Until then, you dodge outposts, you look the other way when the police pass. You know, it's, uh, it's hide and seek. I'll need to work on my disguise. <laughs> We're going to be going into Empire Space. No more masks. No more masks. I mean, I gotta say, <laughs> it was your best performance yet, Kabir. <laughs> Cash Rue and Struggles, <laughs> may they rest in peace. A lot of good junkyard dogs died that day. Are we on our way somewhere right now, or are we just kind of floating? In? Are we going to the Grand Prix? I think we I were on our way to the Grand Prix. Or we're at least on track in space. Okay. You, the boss, had explained that the there was talk that Rex was going to be at the Grand Prix, and that if you wanted a chance to catch up with him, uh, you would go there. But that was about uh, a week's time out. In that time, you took the bounty for Mad Dog, and now okay. you're you. probably about four days away from the Grand Prix. We and we so we were on our way to collect on the bounty for Mad Dog. You, you right? had started to set uh, coordinates to collect on Mad Dog when you made the call. And that, so that's probably you're not heading in that direction. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's that's not yeah. happening. That's not happening. So as it stands right now, we probably need to spend the next few days keeping a, a low enough profile to make sure that we don't we know that they're not hot on our tail. Mm -hmm before we go to any like super populated area where they just fucking pick up on us and we're fucked. Would be kind of like my thought, right? Like, I agree. Yeah. Would Pike or I or anybody sort of know of a place or a planet or, you know, 
asteroid belt or whatever where we could lay low, where, where that kind of might make sense, or, or where, where we would at least feel, like, safe. <clears throat> it says you have this thought mm-hmm. that you'll notice uh, coming from your your control unit, a reflection of your console. You'll see a light... Uh, you'll see a light... Uh, a soft, blinking, like, booping light. Just boop. You've got space mail. (laughs) That's exactly what it is. You've got space mail. (laughs) Right, what have you? Well, (laughs) (laughs) he's kept it. He's kept it right. He's the reason it's still (laughs) there. Mail orders those discs. He's got his (laughs) one to use it. Yeah. (laughs) Got my Um, tapes. As you as you open your you see as you tap on it a white uh, yeah. letter, letter envelope opens up and it uh, in very like slowly bit formation uh, it's not smooth it just boop, 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 the letter opens up uh, and an automated uh, message starts to play uh, a person appears on the screen in front of you uh, brown tattered jacket uh, slightly darker pants shaggy black hair uh, and looks relatively reminiscent of Kavir. Similar tattoos. Um, And the message plays. To the crew of the Rhapsody, please help. Saurians have invaded and they're cut off our contact to the Empire. I only had the chance to send this one message in short range space. Directed at a target. Kavir, if you can help this, if you can hear this, you're our only hope. Do I recognize the voice? You would recognize the person. Oh, I didn't know if I could see it off the camera. Okay. Yeah, it would be. Presumably, yeah, everybody blasted uh, out in front of you. Um, And you would recognize it uh, as someone you know from your homeland, Raish. And. So as I'm hearing this message and I see his face, I become visibly like a little paler. It 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 can't be Raish. Why would he be reaching out? He knows not to contact me. What what? How the fuck did he? How did he get our signal? It's from the ship. It was for emergencies only. But we have to. I have to go home. Are we? There's no way he'd reach out if something wasn't. Terribly, terribly wrong. Are we, are we far? Are we far? Uh, you, you would know the coordinates that would get you there. I would say you would hand them to Dandy, you would begin to plot a map, and you would come to understand that you are probably about a 10 days journey. I from, ten days. You're probably about a 10 days journey. <laughs> Holy shit, it's right over there! Hey, you guys! <laughs> I can see it in my house! <laughs> When he says short wave. <laughs> uh, you're you're probably about uh, like like seven to eight days away. And if you wanted to get there quick, you would uh, have to use other means. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's it's a few days away. It's it's probably seven to ten days. Maybe we can shorten it, but I I have to go, and I I'm going to go with or without you. What, what what's what's the deal? First of all, what do they know? They do they know that you're on this ship? Is there any chance that they're gonna sell that information? Second of all, who is it? How do they know you? Do they have any dirt on you? How fucked are we? I can't answer all of those questions, but Raish is one of my oldest friends. We've been through a lot together, and he knows not to reach out to me unless it's an emergency, unless it's the Empire. It's the reason I left. And if they're back, then I have to go. But he said it was the Thorium. I thought like them attacking planets with all of with all of an old wide tale. It was all just rumors. Oh, did I miss that? Was it the Thorium? Sorry, yeah, I missed that. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> he said the Thorium. Yeah. Right? yeah. Uh, yes and no. You well. 
Ooh. Whoops. Uh, the first, in the first session, uh, you did battle with Bracken and the crew of the Ironsides, uh, and that was a faction of space pirates who had basically split off from the, like, Saurian race as a whole, uh, but those were very much, like, Saurian people. So sorry, it's my apologies. Sorry, it's not the end. What would uh, I? The, what would I know about um, Kavir's friend, uh, Lord Nabush? <laughs> and how jealous is he? <laughs> <laughs> what, what would, uh, if anything, uh, you uh, would have uh, shared with me about uh, uh, this information? I um, just for my own knowledge. Uh, you would have known that shortly after receiving my gifts, I had to flee the planet. Um, and included in that was leaving my friends and family, and Raish was my closest friend. So we've opened up enough to know what Raish, how close Raish is to me and I to him. Um, and that uh, I wouldn't risk going back unless I absolutely felt like I had to. Okay. Yeah. We have to go. I mean, we did say we had to lay low, right? And you're. Home planet is on the outer rim, ain't it? It's it's certainly off the beaten path, yeah. All well, right. then that sounds serendipitous to me. We're not gonna leave your friend hanging out to dry. Don't worry. Thank you. I don't think ten days is gonna cut it. No, if this is as serious as you say it is, then I hate to say it, but. We gotta use the weave. It's honking time. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it's time to start honking all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Oh gosh. I thought the Thorians were beat back. Didn't you fight them or something in some war? I, my memory's very foggy and things get crossed, and I don't know what's real and what's not, and what's past and what's present. I mean, I know that uh, the Empire has fought him for as long as I've known. But, I mean, you know, they're, they're at the very, very outer edges of the galaxy. Uh, I, I'm, I'm surprised that with the Imperial presence that they're able to attack. Something's going on. Either way, it gets us away from Gruncorp. And if we use a method unavailable to them, then even if they are on our trail, we'll be a few days ahead of them. Well, I'm also going to give the full disclaimer, like at the end of any kind of, like, uh, you know, ad for, for medicine you see on <laughs> Faith TV, <laughs> of where there is a chance that we could perhaps go off course and end up in a... A nightmarish demonic hellscape of discordance of all variety, not just Motleyans, all, all four of us. Uh, mostly Motleyans, probably, given that we're using the honk weave, but we could be torn apart, go mad, transform, you could all be turned into, well, no, you guys can't turn into Motley, and that's good. I'll be even more horribly corrupted. I may go cuckoo bananas and say, Mom's gonna freaking betray you all. <laughs> There's a riff. I'll just stand behind you, and if you make any funny moves, I will break your neck. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> don't go that far. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I back away slowly. <laughs> Gosh, he was, he was ready to do it. Laboosh! Why not just go put him face manacles? Well, we'll tie him down until we can find a cure, and we got the same chuckle. None of that. <laughs> It didn't occur to me. <laughs> well, good luck. Good luck getting out of the, out of the Hulk weave when I'm dead. Gosh, you're really learning who your friends are. I should become good friends with Race. I would have waited until we were out oh, of the weave. Oh, sorry, that was too of a low blow. <laughs> what, you said you were going to calculatedly wait and snap my neck? <laughs> well, Boosh, I'm getting it. That is very hurtful. After all the big funk of 64 you played, we don't, like we don't necessarily mind. need to go with emergency oh. protocol just yet. Let's wait and at least get started. It Let's would get. Not have been <laughs> I would have made it pain free. Gosh. Look, it ain't our first rodeo. <laughs> okay. We've done it before, but I don't like it. 
Would this be the longest amount of time we'd spend in the in the Hongkwit? Um, you would not know exactly how it works, but you know that the time is not necessarily a consideration within the weave because of how it folds upon itself. Uh, it's more of distance, and often the travel through it uh, feels relatively similar in the course of how long it takes to get from one end to another. Okay. Like folding two sides of paper together. Oh, like a black and hole. And punching <laughs> straight yeah. through. At the end of the day, no one likes this plan less than I do. But if this is as urgent as you say it is, let's just get it over with. I appreciate it. It's, it absolutely is. If you guys are scared, we can all hold hands. I need full focus, but thank you, Dandy. You should all, the rest of you should hold hands. I'll take you up on your offer. <laughs> okay, I'll well, I'll need to get prepared. If we're doing this. Are we doing this? Yeah, I think it's our only chance. There's no, no point in putting it off. Just the mutterings that you talk about facing the Tharians, I'm sure that they're... Probably, there's probably a bloodbath already. Uh, not to scare you. <laughs> not to scare you, but if. Anyway. It depends how big their force is. I mean, if they brought the big dot, uh, anyways. And even if it's just the vanguard force, the ref could be coming. And, oh, anyway. <laughs> that's the fear. Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's you, the fear. You are, you are proving my points for oh, the urgency. Sorry. I, just, I just get nervous uh, pre honk weave. Okay, I gotta get ready. Okay, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Some canny. <laughs> <laughs> when did you guys get a carry? <laughs> uh, okay. Oh well, hold on. Shh, I get the cream out. <laughs> Sprinkles. A little marshmallow. Little candy llama corn. Ah, oh, perfect. <laughs> You need a fucking biscotti too. Oh, good idea. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's perfect. It's, it's not <laughs> urgent at all. It's not like we should get going as quickly as possible. Okay. The okay. message pops back up, and you hear a race say, "Please hurry! Everyone is dying. <laughs> <laughs> There's so much blood. <laughs> There's so much blood oh. everywhere." Okay. Uh, it's been a long day. <sighs> Danny, can you pull up the star map so I can get a good sense of where we're going? Yep, it's right here. Okay. I'm gonna need to focus. All right, Hank, prepare for the honk weave. Uh, I'll sit down in my chair <laughs> and I'll um, turn off any kind of automatic autopilot, knowing that I have to sort of manually hold on, um, <laughs> kind of steer through this. Uh, okay. Uh, do your thing. I will. Um, I'll get to my station and uh, I'll kind of I'll sit down. What does my station look like? I, does anyone remember? It would be like a uh, I would have worked with you to basically make a either like a seat or a platform that you could almost like connect with and it would be very like you know like like bolted on, right? <laughs> but somehow we figured out some way for you to channel the honk weave into the ship. It's a wooden um, stool bolted to the ground. I just, I picture, <laughs> I picture Danny DeVito's seat when he's controlling the Batmobile in, uh, nice. in Batman Returns. <laughs> was, for some reason I was picturing like a carnival seat where like there's just a vat of water and you're just gonna go oh, like, yeah. <laughs> a dunk tank. That's good, we had to dunk him to get That's it in the Hawkwing. That's so good. That's yeah. actually what it was. This is like a pool of ether. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. It would kill gosh, anyone else yeah, but cause yeah, your yeah. chuckles. I was picturing a jacket. <laughs> yeah. Okay, or a unicycle. I'll get to my seat on like the little wooden plank. Okay, dunk me. There's like a little bullseye and a big tray of balls. Yeah. <laughs> Are you ready? Yeah. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> okay, good. That was nice try, Kavir. Hold on, duck me. <laughs> duck me. <laughs> duck me. Rolling an eight, six, sixteen, and the sixteen hit. <laughs> yeah, no, actually, what, what was the actual? I got two twos. Uh, <laughs> the actual roll was sixteen. So, uh, if, assuming I can add my attack bonus, then yeah, uh, you'd, I, presumably you'd, you'd like twenty-two from, or twenty-four, or whatever the fuck. From two feet away, you hit his the, uh, target with the, <laughs> with the ball. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was actually yeah. gonna say you don't even throw the ball; you yeah, just sloop to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, with your extended with your extended arm. He's missed it now that he just. You. uh you throw uh, this ball and you hit the target for Chuckles. Chuckles, you dunk into the pool of ether uh, covered in it. it. You absorb it, and as you do so, you take off your hat, you reach within it, and you throw out a familiar uh, black hole of sorts that expands and opens uh, and crackles with a chaotic energy. Uh, as you all, Rhett, you punch the Rhapsody into overdrive, and you crash through the opening. Somebody once told me the space world was gonna roll me. I ain't the sharpest space tool in the space chair. It's all bubbling. <laughs> all right, keep me on it, Chuckles. Uh, I'm gonna keep singing. Uh, bubble in a as uh, I will um, basically get louder and louder as we go through the honk weave uh, and basically uh, I guess you're probably your your console would like boot up with commands if I'm in some sort of tank uh, yeah either you would be like left right and yeah. that might oh, do yeah. this yeah. or like it would tell me however you oh, want yeah, to like work that. I can't so, remember how somebody it said dance dance, dance <laughs> revolution keys up so oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. the arrows from DDR <laughs> <laughs> right the con right no the other right right no yes yes <laughs> oh, right oh, oh, right okay no you're doing great this is how this works <laughs> spin move the console's still on and the characters are like bleeding out of off the screen yeah. <laughs> like, like, on the walls and shit you were piloting expertly through the honk weave. You've been in this now. Uh, this is not your first time. The commands are called out, and as you hear each one, uh, you make the appropriate adjustments. The Rhapsody makes turns that if you were to look at it, you didn't think possible. Uh, and I need everyone to roll a charisma saving throw. Oh no. Oh, Natural no. 20. Wow. Very nice, very nice. Oh, I'm, gonna gonna use my new, I'm gonna use my new Labouche dice. I got a 12. Charisma, you say? Mm -hmm. That's where I'm a Viking. Oh cool, it tells me what you just rolled. You got a 17. Yeah, if you press the button yeah. and roll yeah. in the I forgot my dice. Natural so I'm, I'm 20. Oh. Wow! Oh. We're doing well. Oh. Like, uh, got a 7. My saving throw can drink. 21. Twist it. <laughs> I'm gonna twist once. <laughs> I'll twist once as Not well. Not better, I'll I gotta twist. I'll twist once too. I'm really mad. Thank you. 17. 28. Wow. Ooh, better. The honk weave has no effect on me. As you pilot 13. through the honk wheel, uh, you see a familiar sight as it's almost like driving through a tunnel, but instead of being surrounded by darkness, you're surrounded by images that, moves, that move beyond uh, a red glow. Uh, you're surrounded by dark silhouettes, large, that move about, that don't seem to take note of you. Uh, <coughs> until one looks your way and notices you flying through the weave. You see a familiar silhouette, two orbs that rest on either side of the head of a slender figure uh, that has, the, who has uh, what looks like legs that almost balloon out as they go down towards the end. Uh, and it looks at you and you can almost see the black silhouette, uh, the sheen of a smile as the edges of a mouth curl up, and a, the gleaming of a wink as you explode out of the honk weave. Oh. The weaver. Yikes for me, dog. Um, with how with how intense and how quick it was and how with the like the lack of preparation 
by the time we're out, you'll see that uh, my hands, rather than being rounded, they kind of end in claws. My teeth are sharpened. My eyes are like a pitch black. And um, even my my hair is like pointed upwards as I'm like uh, not even singing anymore. And I'm just, I'm just going... <laughs> I start to approach him. <laughs> Same. With my hand trying Are to you okay? <laughs> say it in. Is Read it out. Is Chuckles does not seem okay. Say? Yeah, to be fair, even for Chuckles, this is bad. Danny, how far out are we? Ten minutes. <laughs> You're now ten minutes away. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Bye, look! <laughs> <laughs> and I would say... Chuckles, you're absolutely correct. Every time that you fall into the ether and you draw upon the powers that allow you to explore the honk weave, you feel pulled closer and closer to something discordant at your core, at your center. Uh, and it makes those changes appear in you. Uh, but as you move out of it and time moves away from it, you regain yourself. And I'll close my eyes and open, and it's my normal eyes, and I'll look, ho oh, ho, yike! And I'll just puff back up and balloon back up. Well, that is not a good look as I'm like draining out of my yeah. tongue. I'll hit a button, <laughs> and oh, the, yeah. you'll hear these clanks and these whirs, and the liquid will start to turn into gas and sort of funnel up and out through the tank. And then once all the gas is gone, it'll open up. <laughs> <laughs> And you'll see it as I'm going, I'm just blowing on a bubble pipe. <laughs> you need your robe. <laughs> Are you feeling, feeling okay? Oh, yeah, no, I'm fine. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm, I'm great. I'm great. I just tapped into the demonic force that has warped my soul and turned <laughs> my entire being into clown flesh in order for, for us to... Go beyond the realms of the material. But I'm good. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling great. <laughs> it sounds like he's okay. I have to say, Chuckles, I'm, I'm grateful for your efforts and your sacrifice every time. I'm especially this it. time. I'm happy to do it, Kavir. We need to save your friends and your planet. I've also never been to your planet. I'm very excited to meet all your friends and family. I wish it was under better circumstances, but it's better than nothing right now. Knowing what I have been told by Kavir about the planet and knowing that it is very much a sand planet, I'm going to uh, quickly make my way back to my room and change the filters on my suit mm. and just sort of make sure that I'm uh, uh, as um, free, clear, and clean as possible before uh, entering this environment. You do so. And as the Rhapsody approaches the planet, Kavir would also inform everyone of its biome an arid planet covered primarily in uh, desert lands uh, that is hot uh, and you and can be uh, succumbed to winds at times. And so he would uh, direct you all to wear a version of gear that uh, would protect you from the sand. I have to say, once you are down there, um, you're going to want to wear clothes that cover your face, cover any openings, because the sand, it's, it's, it's coarse, it's itchy, and it gets everywhere. <laughs> I hate sand. <laughs> but if you need a sunscreen, I have what uh, makeup I am made of. You can just sort of, I don't need it, but you can. No, I'm, I'm good, I'll, it, I'll pass. Yeah, I think I'll pass too. You may reconsider, but for now, it's the clothing is the most uh, important piece. Your goo flesh doubles the sunscreen? Oh, yes. How has that never come up? We've never been on such a hot planet before. I've got my own stuff. It's <laughs> motley and great. <laughs> I'm very pale. Well, I'm ready if you are. I would probably gather very similar things that we wore on the last planet, where I would probably have a pair of goggles to just protect mm -hmm. my eyes from any kind of you know, windy debris, and maybe oh, some yeah. sort of a scarf to, to, you know, protect my, my mouth and my lungs. Uh, but otherwise, I'd be, you know, wearing my normal stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You find those things, and you would absolutely recognize that a lot of the gear you made use of uh, 
previously would compare across, except for the fact that you would not want to be in heavy, like, winter's jackets and winter's garb, as it will be hot. Uh, but you find those things absolutely. You all don goggles, you tie up your uh, face to protect from the winds or the sands as much as you'd like. I pull a backplate over my um, head bubble sphere, and it's sort of like a copper reflective uh, uh, <laughs> visor almost. Uh, <laughs> uh, covers almost everything except for just like a little slot right here where yeah. you can see through. That's incredible. You do say that exactly. <laughs> so you don't boil alive and just... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just like a crystal ball in an open window. That's right. <clears throat> Uh, we when we were <coughs> asleep earlier, are, are any of us uh, rested at this point, or are we still like very close to when we? Because <laughs> yeah, we are fogged yeah. up. Uh, Just out of curiosity, sake. We only had a few hours. I, I don't think yeah, we had any more. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you only had that. All happened pretty quick. <laughs> yeah. So I would say, uh, at maximum, you've experienced a short rest. Oh, that might be a okay. uh, Honestly, I'll take that at this point. Uh, I can spend some hit dice. Let's see what I got for How hit dice. Yeah, you can all take your moment to take a short rest. Click on manage. There should be a manage uh, button, uh -huh. and then it'll give you option for short or long oh, rest. Right yeah, yeah. Yeah. You can click on short rest, and then you can choose the number of hit dice you want to use. Uh, and it'll be 1d8 plus 3 for as many as you want to spend. Oh, okay. Oh, I, mean, I, get to, I get to recover my to key points. Dice. Array. I'm going to use a oh, bunch of hit dice. Three. Okay, got it, got it, got it. It's one. Let's use a hollow. My lord! What's the downside of using more hit dice? That's a no downside. No downside. But you only recover half of your uses per long rest. So if you use them all, you'll yeah. only recover three, three on a long them. rest. If you use four, you'll recover two on a long rest. Uh, right? Got one. it, got it, got right, it. Max, so I don't want to necessarily go. Right. Oh, I'm using four. Jeez. Okay. I'll take it. Yeah, I'm in the same I'm boat. using two. Oh, it didn't apply. I mean, one is what I used. Short rest. I didn't need the second one. I'm bad at math. Perfect. Oh no, I don't have any spell slots. I don't actually do. Okay, that's good. Take short rest. Cool. That's awesome. Like short rest. And I'm gonna make sure my key points are good. No, it didn't do Oh god, I love playing monks! <laughs> so much fucking fun! Give me combat base! Let me punch it! <laughs> You're a monk? We'll monk to monk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm just kidding. Yeah, no, I'm, a, I'm a I'm a monk. No I am a uh Drunken ma way of the drunken master monk. Oh. Uh, believe it or not, with some. Uh, Ash, no, you're way of the. Uh, oh, do we flip flop them? I'm Sun, I'm Sun Soul. We we well, splashed Sun Soul. some drunken monk yes. in there. Interesting. So you make like the shimmy. The uh, what? Three. The, the monks who make the beer. Oh yeah, yeah. Kind of, that well, that's the other subclass we stole from. Got they like it. sprinkle yeah. in some extra in real abilities. Life. But yeah, the uh, the 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 way of the. Soul, Sun Soul. Way of the Sun Soul. That's it. That's my actual class, subclass. Yeah. I forgot. Because we just kind of like smash a bunch of subclass yeah. stuff together. <laughs> wow. Um, That's right. Okay. Cool. Okay. You would also know that though you are moving towards this planet with great haste, this is still uh, this is still a planet in Empire control. Uh, and you can't just touch down on it. Uh, you have made approaches and escaped from a planet like this before, uh, and you know that you will have to attempt to do something to mask your ship's signal as you approach in the event uh, that the Empire is uh, gauging incoming uh, vessels. Oh. Um. It's not going to be easy to get down there on the planet. Unfortunately, it's been tainted and, and taken over by the Empire. So, it's, we can't just land. No, I hate those guys. That makes two of us, at least. Can we just like play it cool and say we're like, delivering a space lasagna pizza? <laughs> <laughs> I have, uh, I have Raish's coordinates. On the planet. <laughs> yeah. Once you recover. Yeah. You, so you have. <laughs> Got it. You, you have the exact location of the shipyard that a ship of this size would land in classically to approach uh, Zara Dune, uh -huh. uh, your home world. Uh, nice. As it's a, uh, not a trading planet, but this is where the Empire comes to source its fuel. Uh, oh. And so it is heavily uh, like import export, uh, and so you would know where this ship would land to dock in such a way. 
do I see from our height right now? Do I see any of the storm clouds or any uh, like sandstorms? Uh, roll a perception check. Hmm. Sorry, I'm using the digital dice. Less exciting for y'all. I apologize. Fourteen. <laughs> Good roll. Good roll. I would say uh, with a fourteen, you would definitely. Uh, you would definitely be able to tell, and you would know that generally on on your planet, just about anywhere at any given time, there is a storm happening. Uh, you would be able to tell from the sensors, from the readout, that there's not a storm currently happening anywhere around where you would want to land or on your pathway to get to uh, the town. Hmm. I was hoping that we could use a storm cloud too hide our signature, but I think we might just have to make one. Can you like forge some sort of fake, I don't know, we're just traders or merchants or something? I mean, is that something in your wheelhouse? I could try that. Well, yes, let's try that first. If not, I have uh, sort of a backup plan. <clears throat> and then, so I'll, uh, I'll approach Rhett's uh, console and yeah, please be my guest. Um, establish sort of a connection to the uh, space yard, mm -hmm. and um, you move to the console and you begin to connect to it. You hear a familiar chime as it uh, makes connection. You begin to hail a landing port. Uh, yes, um, I'm so sorry, I'm forgetting the name of the the bay, space the spaceport or the city or. The planet is or It's just an automated... The planet is Zara Dune. Yes. What yeah. you're communicating with is just basically like an automated uh, like feed-out that is pinging for a ship vessel ID. Ah, okay. Um, hello, yes. This is, uh, this is the Sonata. We are requesting landing at the spaceport. We have uh, precious cargo and uh, expediency is, is uh, much appreciated. Uh, roll a deception check. Don't want to do. Am I the precious card? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 19. Yes. Mm. The Sonata was invented by Frank Sonata. <laughs> <laughs> With a 19, you <laughs> have done this before. You have falsified, you have left planets, you have arrived at them all under the cover of fake uh, vessel IDs. You've done this before. Uh, you call out and you enter in and you manipulate and you describe yourselves as the Sonata, a vessel of uh, import bringing down precious cargo in much haste. Uh, and for a moment you see the as you await the ping response and it comes back as accepted. Uh, landing confirmed. All right. I've got us uh, a spaceport we can land, and I'll go ahead and show Rhett the, the coordinates. Nice port. work. It's not the first time, but definitely uh, had me worried there for a moment. All right. Okay, so uh, what's our precious cargo? We gotta, be, if we, we gotta fucking make an act if we're, if we're loading, unloading. Uh, as you look at Chuckles. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, similar to my Shrukel Shrukel's disguise, I have disguised myself as a very generic looking human with uh, short cut hair, large glasses, a pencil protector. Uh, and I will say, Professor Fink. I'm Reynolds, I work in accounting. <laughs> Hail the Emperor. Well, surely Chuckles could create some sort of I don't know, boxes with just stuff in them. And we can just say whatever it is. It doesn't matter what it is as long as they don't open the crates. You do that? Like pull crates out of your hat that say Acme on the side and just have whatever the fuck we need them to if they get open? Schrodinger style? Well, no, that would be heresy on account of being discordant powers. <laughs> <laughs> I would immediately report back to my local uh, uh, Inquisition office. Hail the Emperor. I'm Reynolds. I work in accounting. <laughs> Chuckles, we need you to focus. Are they going to be on the computer <clears throat> screen? Are they going to look into our... Uh, are they going to look into our cockpit? Typically, it's just a, uh, a quick inspection of the cargo once we land, just to make sure it's at least cargo. They usually don't open them. They don't look too closely, but 
We'll be able to grease the wheel a little bit. Do we leave the core on the ship? Is it scannable? I don't know. I mean, it's outside of what they're probably used to looking for, but... What they, they harvest here is fuel, which means there's going to be a lot of other energy signatures on here. It may blend in or get lost amongst all of it. With my bard powers, I can technically create such like a gold value. I know we have like space books and credits. <laughs> so it'd be up to DM Fiat about what I could create. But I can create like a five by five box at this level, I mm -hmm. believe, like technically. And it can okay. basically look however I want. And so it's a matter of if we want to have like a big old decoy box and like whatever they would say it should look like, I should be able to, I believe I should be able to do that. Can you only make one? Yes. Make it look like the Ark of the Covenant. Yeah, I hope for a few boxes. <laughs> I really what sell is, this. What are you asking me? I'm asking if I can just make, if you think it would be within the realm of my possibility to do one or more, uh, basically, whip, basically using my performance of creation to create a um, a large box. Yeah, I think you can create a large box <laughs> that looks like whatever precious cargo it is. It's filled with the bass fish. <laughs> <laughs> the last remaining Billy Bass. The top is Ishimi yeah. energy cores, but yeah. if you dig yeah. under it, it's all big. William Bass. Wide mouth William Bass. That's incredible. You can absolutely do that. This um, moon. I would say 100% you can create a. You can create exactly what you would know uh, expected Empire cargo would look like. Uh, classic steel container uh, in, in roughly the shape and form that you would have seen uh, time and time again. Well, I suppose I could produce something like that. That would go against protocol, and Reynolds always follows protocol. <laughs> Hail the Emperor. <laughs> Reynolds, just make the fucking box. I do not like Reynolds. <laughs> well, I I suppose I could. <laughs> As I'll reach into my pocket and I'll <laughs> and drop down a huge like container. Uh, it'll be like one of those like Fucking uh, like Metroid boxes, like yeah. Metroid, yeah. where basically it's like like steel, and then there's like gaps that glow mm -hmm. with like some yep. sort of humming beams awesome of energy, energy, beams of energy, energy oh. and on the sides. <clears throat> you know, in your heart of hearts, that if they were to probe too closely, it would see that it is in fact filled with wide mouth William Bass <laughs> uh, singing fish, but. Um, it absolutely uh, appears to be exactly what you would want it to look like to pass as Empire Cargo. It's very convincing. Oh, one moment, and I'll pull, reach in, and I'll pull out a large rubber stamp, and it'll say, inspected and approved. <laughs> Beautiful! <laughs> fantastic. Let's go! Absolutely fantastic. And it'll be a very bizarre juxtaposition of some sleek sci-fi looking box, and then <laughs> some fucking stamp. Looney Tunes. Yeah, Looney Tunes. <laughs> like old school rubber oh stamp my God. Uh, with red ink. That's incredible. All out. All out. Um, I will also brandish a piece of paper and using illusory script, write out Ooh. sort of a... Like a um, what is manifesto. that called? Like a manifest. Yeah, it's perfect for for the cargo. Also mm -hmm. reiterating that it's been confirmed, inspected, and, and ready to go. And you create kind of this uh, like energy fold out, uh, and on it script that would go down reflecting the cargo and that it has in fact already been inspected. Yeah. Uh, and as you do all this, the Rhapsody touches down in the shipyard. Uh, you head to the hangar bay where you begin to disembark. Uh, onto the planet of Zaradun. Uh, the back. As it hits the. Thank you, thank you. As it hits the. As it hits the. Uh, as it hits the sandy ground. <laughs> you step out and. Uh, you're wrapped up in your clothes, ready to take on uh, the arid, sandy uh, texture of this planet. 
uh, and you see surrounding you a large uh, open space with ships of varying sizes, shapes all around you. It looks almost like uh, if you've ever been to kind of a boatyard, something uh, similar to that, a wide open space with stacked ships uh, all around. Uh, you disembark, and you expect very much to be inspected, but no one comes to greet you. No one comes to check in with this ship that's just landed, the Sonata, uh, and it is eerily quiet. I am uh, pushing the crate uh, all on my own using a uh, hover dolly. Hmm. Uh, just uh, uh, making sure that uh, everyone is leading the way, but sort of looking around and making sure that everyone seems safe as yeah. much as possible. Mm -hmm. This is certainly odd. There would normally at least be one person inspecting the plane, the ships. Mm. Hmm. Do I, looking around the hangar, do I see anything else that would sort of catch my eye in terms of how odd this is? Roll inspection. Oh, uh, inspection. Investigation. 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 Perception. Perception. Or personal Perception. investigation. Yeah. Perception. Uh, 17. With a 17, nice. you look around, and it is odd to nice. not have somebody yeah. kind of immediately yeah. greet and question you, especially on a planet that holds so much value. Um, however, you look around to see where anyone might be or if anyone is on the approach. Uh, towards the edge of the yard in the direction you know your town to be, uh, you see closer than the town itself is, you see uh, fading black smoke rising into the... Of, of, oh, okay. Fading black smoke rising into the air. Um, so I'll be looking around and that'll sort of catch my eye and immediately I'll be filled with that urgency. Like, we need to go. We have to go now. That's my... My town is that way. Where we I'm lead from. Lead the way. And then so I'll sort of start heading that way, almost not caring that anyone's following me. Mm -hmm. um, and sort of just rushing in that direction. I don't even look to the other floor. Yeah. I'm just following Kavir with my space dolly crate. I would, yeah. Yeah, we would follow start follow to really. race off all in the direction of the black smoke. Should we, we steal a speeder? <laughs> <laughs> Are there any? I'll adjust my red poke <laughs> up high. <clears throat> yeah, there's speeders at the building you're heading to. The, you start to race off in the direction of the black smoke, uh, and as you make haste, you uh, realize you're coming to the end of the shipyard, and what you're walking towards is uh, an empiric barracks. And you see, as it starts to come into view, a crater blown through the top of it, uh, and the smoke erupting from that space. Are there any survivors? Or any, any... Did you go into it? Uh, oh, um... What in the fucking hell? That's, that's where the smoke was coming from? Sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> it, uh, the Saurians must have gotten here. As, as happy as this makes me to see the Empire suffering, I, I know it just means there's something worse. All right. Um, be on guard. Uh, and then we'll... We should check to make sure there's no survivors. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point, Reynolds. <laughs> That's make maybe they sure can tell us something. there's no survivors. <laughs> I'll go in. And yeah, we'll, I'll, I'll head in with the bush. Um, Me too. I'll uh, uh, leave the space dolly in the crate, and I'll sort of lean down so that I can step through the first of the doorways and, and uh, first to make sure that everything structurally seems like it may be on fire, there may be smoke, but does it look like it's going to collapse all around me? Uh, we'll say roll a group investigation oh. check right now. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> investigation? Oh, boy. Yeah, investigation. Oh, investigation. we got an 18. Oh, with a plus, plus one. Oh. <laughs> 19. 10. <laughs> And what did you roll? Eleven Z's. That's the, that's the dice roll? Yes. A solid four. You want the dust the dice roll? Not for anybody else. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> the as you approach this building, it is structured in the classic style of this planet. It's almost like a, um, like a like a dust tan 
texture to the outside uh, in smooth stone as it rises up and a blast hole open. There aren't uh, like glassed windows as much as there are cut open uh, sections where they might stand and look out. Uh, the door is large and steel, and as you push in, uh, you begin to be met with uh, a scene. The floor uh, is littered with dead bodies of empiric guards, inspectors, and as you make your way through the carnage, uh, you can see that some uh, have been cleanly cut in half uh, with uh, sections of their body, uh, teeth marks bitten through them. Some slashed through the torso with four distinct uh, carved lines cutting them through the center. Uh, their blaster fire covered throughout the, the walls, scorch marks as it burns in. Uh, but these have been brutally destroyed. This is a smaller group of guards than you would have expected. You think that with so few natural predators, the Empire had grown lax in its defense of this place. And they had stationed a force here that was insufficient to hold back the onslaught of a Saurian war party. And they paid the price. Pike. Uh, how many of us, or if you just want to tell from me, that's fine, have would have done any kind of hand-to-hand -hand or combat with Saurians. I know that we clashed with them in space, but would any of us have seen Saurians like in the flesh, person to person? Or the aftermath of them. Mm. Yeah, that too. Yeah, that's good. I would Probably say. Probably me, and yeah, I don't know about Pike. That, yeah, I'm asking because I genuinely don't know if I would have ever like had hand-to-hand -hand combat with them. Rhett, for person. sure. Okay. Not me? And me? You have no recollection. Um, Interesting. I would say possibly Labouche. I seem to fight pretty much everything. <laughs> yeah. Labouche and Rhett, exclusively. Okay. Right. I mean, this is a, at most, this is an ancient race of warriors yeah, that live on the outskirts yeah. of the galaxy. As much as, to, to the common folk, as a boogeyman could be. Almost yeah. just like tales that have never truly come to pass. War stories that sound like old fishermen's tales of the, the largest uh, the largest sea kraken that anyone's ever run into, that nobody believes. Um, and only for the extremely unfortunate uh, would you have encountered in hand-to-hand -hand battle uh, this race of savages. Okay. So I would know they exist, but I definitely would not have fought one. Correct. Got it. They didn't stand a chance. No, they didn't. Thank goodness. <laughs> It'll all fill back out. I hate that Reynolds guy. I do not like him either. I mean, even with uh, twice the force they had, I don't think they could have repelled this kind of attack. I don't know why they're here. We've avoided them for so long, but now we have to find Raish. He'll know. He'll know at least why they're here. Before we go any farther, I gotta ask. This is getting pretty interesting yet again. Do we have any chance of fighting these things, or are we in way over our heads? I mean, it depends on... It depends if they're still here. I mean, do we see any kind of, like, ships, any kind of Saurian ships at all? Have we seen anything, like, in the atmosphere or, like, floating in the, in the sky or anything like that? Uh, roll a ship handling check. That's a, like, for your spaceship to yeah. see if you got any readings on the way oh. in. Space vehicles check. Oh, the natty! 31. Woo! 
Oh my gosh. <laughs> we know more than the They've all been eradicated. <laughs> Golly. Uh, right over there. <laughs> <laughs> They're 10 feet from here. <laughs> you like turn around, it's like. <laughs> uh, we're over here. <laughs> um, coming in. So you'd been scanning, you knew the you knew the warning, you knew the threat, and you'd been scanning for signature, uh, signatures as you approached the, the planet. As you landed, uh, and um, as you'd landed and you sent the signal to uh, encompass the planet and understand what was there, um, you pinged back the uh, tower in the main town, understanding where it is and what that is. Uh, and just on the outskirts of the town, uh, you pinged the signal of a, a Saurian warship. Stationed right outside. Oh yeah, they're still here. <sighs> Which direction? Are they towards the, the town, the, the main part of the town? Or? You would know that from here, you would have to go uh, to the like northeast to get to Garu Bay, uh -huh. your town. Uh, you would know, Rhett, that probably uh, about a 20-minute ride outside of the town, uh, there is a Saurian warship to its east, stationed on the ground. They're landed. Uh, instead of beaming them down, they... They're landed on the ground, and they have one of their warships stationed there. Just one, which is good news. But in your town, I mean, is there any kind of militia? Are they fighters? Can they can they help us? I mean, I, I trust the six of us over 20 or 30 Imperial Guards, frankly, but... I mean, it's hard to say without knowing exactly what they have. It's been so long, I won't know. Um, but it's at least not in the same direction, so we can head there and hopefully avoid any trouble between now and then. I just worry if they get sent of us. If we go now, maybe we have time, we can make sure, check on everybody, and then take it from there. If we need to get them out, we got room on the ship, hopefully. Agreed. The big ship. We'll see how many are left. I can clear out some more cloths of defender wing and, and uh, you decoration. You said there were speeders outside the building? Uh, there are speeders of a sort. Outside the building, there is a collection of sand streamers. Uh, they will float above the sand, uh, and you propel them like a solar sail. Uh, on them, it almost what looks like kind of flat planks of uh, wood or a flat floor of wood, and then under, um, like balloons, but almost like inflated pylons that will help to lift it mm. off the ground, uh, and then what looks like uh, a like sun yellow sail that sits on top of it, and this could hold uh, the party. Is there um, knowing? These are the, the same type of speeders that I'd be familiar with. Mm -hmm. Knowing that, would using them put us in any danger of being identified as like, we're on our way? It doesn't make enough of a trail sort of thing that would trigger, uh, oh, there's movement. You would know actually that because this doesn't touch the ground, it will not kick up sand or dust, and it wouldn't generate a trail of sorts. It would also just not leave tracks. Uh, and you would know that to maneuver through the deserts, uh, you would want to use one of these to stay off the ground. Our best chance of getting to Gera Bay are these speeders. Um, they're quite e easy to use, at least for me. I was doing it most of my life, but I can give you a quick tutorial. Well, can't we all fit on one and you just fly up there quick? <laughs> Unfortunately not. I don't want to take the time to learn it. <laughs> I'm going to get all... I've never operated a fail. Do we so we can all fit on one? You can all fit on. It's one. like a skiff, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, it's like oh, I'm sorry. Like I think meant there was enough to like there were six oh, of them. Oh no, 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 no. Therefore, it's like uh, enough for all you know, of them. like almost like a like a boat. You know, oh, okay. Like yeah, who knows? We yeah. can all fit on one. <laughs> oh, wonderful! <laughs> I was gonna crash in the dune. <laughs> yeah, I'll leave the pilot in to you, and I'll, I appreciate uh, it. I'll walk up and yeah. get on. <sighs> 
Hey, don't hesitate to let me know if anything goes haywire. You understand? Uh, all right, and so is everybody on the... I'll lift the crate and have it land and then sort of, uh, I guess, dock the hover dolly uh, at, on the side of the, the guard's tower. We can't forget that. We'll be back. Don't worry. I won't forget. And, you don't grow uh, trees. <laughs> um, but I'm uh, sitting on the crate uh, ready to go. Oh, perfect. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, so I'll look around and make sure everybody's you know, situated, and then uh, I'll pull on the, the lever and, and get us speeding forward. Roll a sand speeder check. <laughs> Which would be a... <laughs> How do you roll those checks? Uh, so I <laughs> add, add my... Add, add, I add my in plus my proficiency. So whatever skill ability check you think makes sense for this. So like maybe a, a dex or like an int or you know whatever yeah. you think is relevant to... Roll a dex. Charisma. Dex plus proficiency probably. Dex yeah. plus proficiency. So, yeah. Oh. yeah, do that and then add three. Oh, add three. huge, big money. 21 plus three, 24. Yep. This is the Jeez. first time I've seen Kabir do this. And yeah. I'm like, looking like I need to maybe help. And then I see how, like, dexterously <laughs> he's putting the sail down and doing the whole thing. And I yeah. uh, just sit back down on the crate. It'd and be like you Anakin haven't done this in reason. a long time. But the second you start to unfurl the mast and you unravel the rope and you tie it to the masthead, you start to move uh, across this ship like uh, like you were doing it yesterday. Like you've just come home and you've never left. Uh, you move about, you step easily, and as the you prepare the sand speeder to travel, uh, you whip up uh, sands around you and you begin to fill the sails uh, as you make a motion. And as you do, it bursts forth with speed, and you rocket through the desert towards Geru Bay. Uh, and with a 24, that looks pretty friggin' cool. <laughs> uh, you hit a series of dunes, and you uh, are very careful to keep the speeder off from touching the ground or resting on it for too long, because you know that what happens when you do, uh, or you know what will come if you do. Uh, and as you move throughout the deserts and you hit the dunes and you rock it up hmm. into the air uh, and you land uh, with no thud, uh, you deftly move through as you speed towards your destination. Is there much sand in the air as this happens or is it totally, I mean, I know he's not kicking up sand, but I'm trying to get a sense like of a how whoosh. much I might be getting yeah. hit by a, a, a drizzle of sand, let's call it. I would say actually as it is right now, uh, it is not very windy. Uh, the winds can pick up and if it had, there would definitely be a cascade of kind of like sand that's coming at you. Mm-hmm. But right now, the wind that you're being buffeted by is just from the creation of how fast you're moving to uh, the town. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to turn to Red as we're going and be like, I know you're a very good pilot, but this, this is sand speeding. <laughs> <laughs> you're just going to try to get as many of those references in there. Oh, that's the new trick. Yeah. <laughs> try spinning that. Oh, my God. <laughs> Uh, so we're, we're just gunning it towards towards Garibay. Yeah, you are blasting. Things are just flying past you, but it's open. Uh, it's open desert, uh, kind of on all directions. And I'll have everyone roll a group perception check. Oh, again. oh yes, I'm good at this one. She was gonna roll really low. Oh. <gasps> Thirteen. I rolled really well. <laughs> Twenty-two. Twenty-two. Oh my gosh. I got a fourteen. New dice. What is one better yeah. than thirteen? Yeah. New dice. I got a plus seven. I didn't roll very well. Uh, I have a plus one. Fourteen. Fourteen. A seven. Seven. Uh, oh boy. The sand speeder is absolutely blasting towards your destination. Things are whipping past you. Uh, and Labouche, as you sit on the edge of this and you kind of. Uh, just gaze off into the distance, potentially even just enjoying the ride, seeing your friend uh, dominate in his element. Uh, Something on the very edge of the horizon catches your eye, and it looks almost like uh, like a crashing wave of sand in the far distance. And you can't catch it for a brief moment, two, three seconds, 
almost looks like movement. And then as quick as you saw it, it disappears into the, the shimmering, heated air of the desert. Kavir. Yes, my friend. Are there uh, creatures who live under the sand? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> and do they make like a wave when they get close to the surface? Yeah, why? Ah, no reason. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but uh, if you happen to see exactly that, let me know. I saw exactly that. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, are, they, are they friendly? No. <laughs> <laughs> I can assure you they're not. Uh, they're, are they very dangerous? Most definitely. Oh, uh, uh, <laughs> They're not fast, though, are they? They're very fast. Oh! Uh, <laughs> Oh! <laughs> I've been doing my best to keep us from touching the sand, which typically triggers them, so maybe it's not us. Does it look like that wave from what Labouche, actually, I don't know, I, does it look like it was coming towards us? Or just, it was a movement in the distance? Does it look like it was coming towards us? <laughs> <laughs> I'd say, what you roll, with like a 22? 22, yeah. I'd say with a 22, uh, it's hard to judge um, depth at, at that distance. Uh, but you did not get the sense that that seemed like it was moving towards you, more that it just like breached, crested, like it breached uh, in, a, in a parallel direction. Like a friendly yeah. sand. It's hard to say. I was looking only through one eye this way and the other <laughs> eye this way. <laughs> I have a bad feeling about this. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, the good news is I've been dealing with these for most of my life, so we'll deal with it if it gets a little closer. For now, I'm going to assume it's not coming at us directly. All right, I'll just uh, sit here and, uh... <laughs> <laughs> and I'll, like, mount my, my cannon on the yeah. side of it, just in case, like, I'm, like, looking on down edge. at the ground, at, like, the sand passing underneath us very quickly, just to see that there's nothing bursting out of it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would say that, that being in my element on this speeder, sort of back home, despite it being kind of a dire situation, I am enjoying this again, but I'm also sort of filled with this overconfidence having done this my whole life. Mm. So to me, it not being, you know, within a certain distance or what have you doesn't quite, it's like, okay, I've seen this before, like it's, it's whatever. Mm. Yeah. Just to give you an idea of how I'm presenting this. And let's say roll a group stealth check. Oh. oh. What? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Man, I'm gonna I'm gonna twist this one. I'm gonna twist this one because my stealth is very high. If you don't mind me, how are we doing? On pulling twist? out a twist here. Oh yeah, eleven. We have plenty. Oh, wow. Is it possible? <laughs> no, my first roll is better. I got a thirteen again. It's broad daylight. Wow. How can you steal? Yeah, right. <laughs> Fifteen. Uh, I gotta get. I'm getting all the bad rolls out early. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Nineteen, go. surprisingly. No. Nineteen. Twenty-three. Danny. 23. And no, you guys covered. 15. 15. You guys covered. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> now we're good. We're good. There are moments, as you described, you've been on a sand speeder uh, multiple times, and you pilot it deftly. Um, but you're normally on here yourself, right? And this is a hefty crew. Uh, and as you hit certain dunes, the weight of the sand speeder will bounce. Uh, just a couple times on the ground. Ah, uh, uh, and as you do that, you will see, Labouche, once more, uh, a familiar crest of sand that looks like it's now heading in your direction. Oh, so as you continue crest to of sand <laughs> heading in our direction! <laughs> as you continue to move towards the town. Uh, so am I now sort of noticing that like little bit of skipping or skimming? Uh, yeah, I would say you're definitely, like, you would feel it as you kind of, like, the back pylons to, like, catch the ground mm -hmm. a little bit. You know what comfort, you know what agility feels like, and you know that you're dragging a little. Okay. Man, it must be a while, because, uh, dragging ass a little bit here, so, uh, <laughs> do we have anything we can throw off? <laughs> Maybe help lighten us up. We have the, the box. Throw the box off. I could throw off the grate. Yeah, get rid of the one to look at it. Yeah, get rid of the fucking crate. It has served its purpose. Uh, Why did you put it on, LaBouche? You've killed us all. I throw it. Uh, and oh, it is the sand. Uh, <laughs> no, that's okay. That's okay. It'll give us.
was time to get away. Open. Yeah. Uh, I did it. The Empire of Words. And then it disappears into nothingness. Sorry. My bad. Hopefully that helped. Does that, does that help it's like, our... It's like a concussive decoy. We'll be all right. <laughs> yeah. It's good. Does that help uh, our scenario at all? Our situation? Um, you hear singing run. <laughs> As you do that, you chuck the box off of the speeder, and it, uh, give me the attack roll. Yes, sir. That's where I'm a pseudopod. <laughs> oh, yes, you I am. Nice. That looks like a 20. That is a that 20. Is yeah! Oh, you might have just saved us. Uh, yes. um, I will grab it by both handles, and I'll start to turn, but I don't have to turn my, like, legs. They stay planted. <laughs> it's like rotating. Just, Spin and twist at the actual <laughs> waist, and faster and faster. My arms getting longer and longer and longer until finally I just shot put the fucking thing hundreds of yards. Like a <laughs> child on a swing, you spin and spin and spin until you have that uh, tight tension in your torso. You grab onto the box and you hold tight as you release, and you and you launch the box. Uh, chaotically behind you, uh, and it soars through the air, uh, and it lands with a deep skidding thud as it hits the ground uh, about um, 300 meters behind you. Uh, as it happens, Damn. you see the you see the uh, shifting sand move towards. Uh, the thudding of that box. Oh. Uh, you now feel the ship a little lighter, no longer bouncing. Uh, you are sailing cleanly. And as the box lands, you can see the sand uh, approach and then disappear. Does the crate get consumed by like some sort of horrible mouth? Yes, exactly correct. After it disappears, <laughs> uh, erupting so out of the ground, you see an enormous, monstrous creature. Uh, the head of razor sharp teeth move back in a circular maw. Uh, dark uh, brown scales uh, in sections cover its torso as it erupts and consumes the box and dives back into the ground. You can see almost exclusively maw. You see the tiniest closed slits where you think eyes might be. When but it, it does not. Mouth, does a smaller one come out? Not a smaller one. <laughs> no, that doesn't happen. No, 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 that doesn't happen. No, that's, no, that's just bad. crazy. That would be really. Funny. Yeah, that's just oh, wild. Okay. Um, <clears throat> as this enormous, gargantuan creature, bigger than quite possibly anything any of you have seen so far, bigger than the mechanized armadillo, uh, erupts from the ground and destroys uh, this cargo. I'm glad I rocked that crate. It made good bait. It was perfect, yes. If only we didn't have it in the first place. I should have thought of that. <laughs> My bad. There's always a bigger worm! Wasn't <laughs> <laughs> that a fake crate? Uh, it, was a crate. it was a real crate. It was, it was real me. enough. Yeah. A fake real crate? Yeah. Wait. Is it like a bomb or anything? Can you like add any kind of special properties to it, or do you just invent a crate? Unless it's allergic to large Ma William <laughs> trout. I don't think so. Oh, I'm kind of Trust me, it takes a lot more than a little bomb to hurt them. Yeah. All right, you hear well. in the distance a <laughs> <laughs> as it dives back it on the shooting ground. Back yeah. Oh, is that it? Uh, I think that's... it's full for now. Certainly not full, but at least it's distracted enough. We right. should be okay. And so we're still heading towards Garibay. And you make your way. Uh, and you are able to complete your journey with uh, little additional excitement. Uh, the sand speeder moves across the desert ground uh, easily. And as you do, in the distance, you see uh, a familiar sight breaking the horizon. Uh, similar architecture to the guard, the Empiric Guard Tower that you see, but a wall uh, of that classic stone, uh, almost like adobo, a white stone, but kind of a adobo style, yeah. uh, surrounds the entire enclosure. 
uh, as you pull up to an outer section where you know that you can st- drop your uh, sand speeder. Uh, uh, perfect. So we'll be heading towards it, and then I'll kind of grab the, the air brake and then slide us right into what would be more like a parking space and kind of just walk off all cool. Whoa, uh, very proud of like that. I would uh, definitely give you like a like a <laughs> clap on the back because I'm impressed with your with your pilot abilities as I light another cigarette and and also step off the speeder. Another uh, another day in the galaxy, another set of firsts. <laughs> I cannot tell you how much I miss that, but again, it's I wish it was under different circumstances. And looking around, it's it's kind of sinking in that I'm back home mm-hmm. after how long it's been, and sort of the joy and everything from my face fades away and it gets a lot more serious um, and as happy as I am to be back home it's we have to find Raish alright well just keep your ears open for dinosaurs and I'll get off what, <sighs> what? dinosaurs you ever heard one uh, no ears <laughs> 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 Noise hole. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> LaBouche starts making them bigger. I'm sure. Two like, extremely <laughs> anatomically correct like, ears to suddenly gel out of both sides of my head, and I look like fucking the main guy from a Mad Magazine cover. <laughs> uh, yeah. My, uh, I'll uh, reach into my hat and I'll pull out like a bit of clothing and just just throw it at myself, and suddenly my hat will turn into like one of those big. Uh, like floppy hats, uh, sun hats, and uh, I'm like, gonna like have uh, shorts, uh, and uh, j- my feet, my giant clown shoes are now giant sandals with socks. <laughs> Wait, just, <laughs> just so we're clear. Uh, I hate that they have socks. Just, so, yeah, socks. just so we're clear for the hat, are you like going uh, uh, like archaeology or like Kentucky Derby? Which rather uh, archaeology, <laughs> like one like a Taurus would wear. Yeah, okay, like shaded in the back. Uh, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. And then a, a big a swab of sunscreen on my red nose. <laughs> yeah, perfect. Uh, that I can see. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. Um, <laughs> so I guess looking around, is there what I would expect to see at this entrance? Like if it was, do I see anyone else or any sign of, of other villagers here? You start to, so this, uh, the bay is covered in the same kind of lighter. It's not quite the desert ground as it is outside. It's a little bit of a lighter colored sand and it's smoothed out and flattened uh, in the the way of like pathways. Uh-huh. Uh, this whole space is surrounded by not, a, not an extremely tall uh, wall, but it's enclosed on all sides by a, uh, by a structural protection. Uh, you, once you've docked the sand speeder, you walked off, you've moved into uh, Garu Bay itself. Uh, and as you walk past, you also see, um, uh, like on the ground, almost like an aqueduct that runs the, the interior lining of the wall itself. Uh, so, uh, unlike the arid expanse outside, once you got into this section, uh, there's a little bit more uh, verdant, uh, like lush greenery. Though it's still very much firmly desert, uh, lining the wall you have water, you have green sections of grass, you have what looks like uh, palm trees uh, as, it, as it circles the town. Uh, and as you move towards its center, you do see people here and there uh, townsfolk that maybe even some you've come to know, but as they see your party moving through, uh, they start to uh, hurry into their homes. They shut doors. They close windows. They're clearly afraid of something. Even my presence alone doesn't phase them. And uh, I'm going to sort of continue, just sort of walking down the street. Would I have any idea of where Raish would typically be? You would know of. Uh, two places. He manned kind of like a uh, communications space, and he was the the main person that was over uh, the the like communicate the comm tower that would allow this space to uh, talk to anyone from the outside, uh, and then also uh, his family's uh, tavern. It's been a while. 
Um, I have to assume that Ray's reaching out to us means that he was at the comms tower. But he could also be with his family. I think our best bet would be to go to the comms tower first. And we can see if there's any incoming transmission from any dino boy. We can probably get more info there as well. It seems like there's no danger here yet. I mean, if people are milling about, seem to be afraid of us, but... They're preparing. You know, that's good news. For now. Yeah, on the bright side, they may have flattened other towns. <laughs> Instead, of this. <laughs> Instead of this one. This is every other one, in fact. You would take to I mean it's flattened and, and destroyed. <laughs> um, so we're going to head towards the... I'm going to lead us towards the, the comp star. Okay. Uh, and you all start to make your way. You walk through the town uh, surrounded by these buildings. Uh, and you see sections of the sand. You'll start to notice... Um, it's not the destruction here that you saw at the Empire, but there are definitely sections of sand that seem to have uh, faded, dried spots of blood uh, as you move towards the comms tower. Uh, you eventually start to see a long steel structure that extends up into the air, uh, and you know that uh, just a few more steps in front of you, uh, and you'll be there. <clears throat> Something happened here. What I'm like visibly becoming a little more angry. I don't know how many people are hurt. I don't know what's going on, but I, I, we have. I, I'm going in. I'm going into the comms tower. We're right behind you, Kavir. And uh, yeah, we'll head. I'll head right in, or attempt to head in. I will head, approach, approach the door. The door opens at your touch. Uh, inside, you see it's dark, but you can see uh, table, papers strewn about it, uh, a radio, some screens that assist in calling out, uh, and a second level uh, up top that's closer to uh, like like what you would assume is the space he would go to to maintain the tower itself. <clears throat> you don't immediately see Raish. Raish, Raish, are you here? Kind of looking toward, obviously I wouldn't see, I would know that downstairs there's nobody here, right? At this. I uh, roll an investigation check. Ooh. Eight. You think that there's nobody downstairs. Okay. Um, so sort of heading towards the, what would lead me upstairs, I'm calling out for Raish. Um, are you here still? Raish, anyone? You hear a slight shuffling from upstairs, the presence of someone. Did, did anyone else hear that? In my nose, noise holes, yes. <laughs> Be ready for anything. How uh, is this, uh, what does it look like to get upstairs? Do we have to kind of go Just one at a time? Just off to the side, a little bit of a staircase that goes up to a sealed off floor. So you walk up on the right side of the room, and then you crest in at the far end of the room, at the second level. Could be dangerous. You want me to check it out? It might help us. Uh, but I have an idea, and I'll use the um, what is the my genie gift to to fly. So I'll conjure the sands underneath me, and sort of float up the stairs so I don't make any noise to the point where I can see. Now, would it, when I go upstairs, is that where I would go through a door and see, or is it kind of like a railing that I would get it high just, enough to see over? Yeah, it's just a, it's like an open hole in the floor, so there's no door, just once you get to a certain height of the, kind of like walking into an attic almost. Peek up over the lip. Yeah, you could peek yeah. up potentially okay. over the lip. Yeah, so I would take myself as close as I can to that to try and see into the second floor, if I can see what made the noise. And real quick, just so, since I, not to split the party too much, but as they were going in, I would be last, and I would sort of just kneel down by the, the blood stain on the floor, in the in the dirt or in the, in the mm. sand, mm. and just try to get a sense of like how long it's been there, and if it smells or even like tastes like 
do I think it's human, or do I think it's humanoid, or dinosaur, or if I have any kind of sense of that given my background? Yeah. Zorvoon. Um, Zorvoon, right. Roll a medicine check. Uh, that's a 15. It's pretty good. Yeah. So you, I think, kneel down uh, in the sand to to expose or to investigate these blood stains. Uh, you immediately recognize that it's blood. Uh, when you begin to investigate it, maybe you pull at it, uh, you smell it. Uh, you've seen remnants of war before, uh, and you uh, you can tell that this is probably this is recent. But days old. It's dried, uh, but it is very firmly humanoid blood. I'll get up and dust myself off and uh, start to head in while this is happening. Mm. Uh, you begin to float up the stairs, making no sound as you ascend. Uh, you take it a step at a time, you go up, and your head. J- begins to peek past the line of the floor. I need you to roll a perception check. Ooh, 20. Let's go! Not that 20, dirty 20. Pretty good. At Beautiful. A 20. <laughs> I need you to roll a dex saving throw at advantage. Oh no. Uh, oh, beautiful! A, a nineteen, and we'll roll another one just for fun. Uh, yeah, nineteen. My man. <clears throat> With a nineteen, as you, yeah, yeah as you begin to crest uh, the floor, the room open up uh, opens up in front of you, uh, and you see the tower extending through the roof. You see. Uh, a seat where uh, somebody was tinkering with the metal. Uh, And you see movement just above you for a split second uh, as someone descends on top of you. But with your deafness and with your uh, ability, you're able to catch the upper hand as this person falls on top of you. You get them in a grapple hold as you tumble back down the stairs. Uh, someone with the sand wrapped uh, with wraps around their face to protect from the sand. Goggles on, but a familiar brown jacket. Oh. So I, kind of oh. man. <laughs> yeah, I, would, I guess we would see you tumble down yes. the stairs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As yeah. you tumble down the stairs, you would all, as you're in the lower level, you I would, would turn right for a fight. Down. My yeah. hands stretch out. Oh yeah. I will uh, get uh, my hands underneath. Kavir's back and, and steady and slow his roll as quickly as I can. You do so as you extend out an extended, uh, flattened palm and you soften the blow to the ground as you tumble. <sighs> Does yeah. anyone make an attempt towards the person that I just tumbled down with? I would have just taken a stance like you've seen me do hundreds of times, like I'm ready for a fight. <laughs> I'm pointing I'm... my gun at him. Yeah. Okay. I cast disintegrate. I don't. Uh, I'm barely coming in in the building. <laughs> after uh, after catching eyes on the the brown jacket, I'm gonna pop up with the the aid of um, uh, of Labusha's catching me. Uh, wait, 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 and uh, I'm gonna turn around and look down. Raish, uh, the figure drawn a knife. Uh, from his belt, looks around like a like a like a cornered animal for a moment, surveys the room, uh, and then stands, calms a little bit, decoils as it were, stands uh, a little more calmly, uh, and then in, very quickly embraces you in a hug uh, as he moves forward, and you hear him, you hear just a muffled. <laughs> You know, I could never understand you wearing that stupid thing. <laughs> uh, and he, t- he unwraps the, the protection from his face for a second. Uh, Kavir, my friend. It's so I, I didn't know you would come. I had to. What choice did I have? Uh, you are in the communications tower. You are on the first level. Uh, Kavir and Raish just having tumbled down the stairs uh, as everyone stands at attention. Uh, as Labouche helps to righten them up. Uh, and Raish says, um, I didn't think that you would come. Of course I came. What choice did I have? I knew the only reason you'd reach out is if it was serious. What's going on? The 
The Saurians. They came unexpectedly. The Empire did not. They, they didn't anticipate them. They weren't ready. They came with a different technology. They were seeking something. We think that they want the fuel. But we've had the fuel for ages, and we've always stayed off their radar. Something's different. They're, they're more organized now. They attacked us with a war band. They slaughtered the Empire instantly. There had to have been 80, maybe 100 of them. They killed half of the village. They killed half of our people? Garube. Half of everybody. Gone. So that we would continue to work for them. Where are they? When did they do this? When I sent the message originally, just a couple of days ago they landed. The destruction is still fresh. I'm like seething. Um, I'm going to destroy every single one of them for doing this to our people. That is why I called you. I thought if anybody could turn them away from our land, it would be you and your new friends. Tales of your exploits have not gone unspoken. I hope that's not why they ended up here. You know I left to avoid this. Where... Is your family okay? Killed. <gasps> Where do we go from here? What's the plan? Is there a plan? I think that I can get you to their encampment. Unseen, but there's something I've been working on. I can, uh, I've scouted out to them before. Uh, I've developed a, a light cloaking device, but I, I don't yet have the know-how or the technology to make it cloak an entire sand speeder, just myself. Uh, I've scouted to their ship. I've seen how they get in. I, I know, not the layout, but I know where they're taking the fuel. And I think, well, my plan was if you could come here, if you could sneak in like you're so, you're so deftly known for, then I think you might be able to destabilize their ship's core where the energy cycles lie, and I, I don't know, blow it up, destroy them all in one fell swoop. That's the best case scenario for them. Do you have this device on you? It's at home. Red, does this sound like something that you'd be able to make better, to be able to, do, to, to cloak maybe all of us? Or a larger area? Kavir is one step ahead of me. I was just about to tell you, we happen to have the greatest engineer in the galaxy right here. Also, we're really good at blowing up whole populations. <laughs> we just did it like yesterday. So we'll take care of these Thorians, no problem. Well, that is excellent news, I think. I'm happy to take a look. I can do a bit of cloaking myself and I'll activate my sort of cloaking where I'm I, I, you can still see me but I'm just shimmering a little bit um I don't know if I can you know we can compare notes and develop something that'll work on the whole vessel if anyone can do it it's right I'd, I'd be happy to I uh, anything you can do to to help I there's nothing I want more than the, the death of all of these bastards if if I can take you all there I think maybe I, I can get you in and, well, hopefully, I, I, I don't even know how I can ask, but 
to destroy them all, oh, to cast them out, to save us. At this point, you don't need to ask. I promise you will take care of them. Thank you, my friend. Uh, and he'll reach out to grasp your forearm uh, as you <laughs> as you clasp tattooed arms. It is good to have you home. It's good to be home. Um, I'll walk up to to Raish and I'll say, uh, "Do you uh have it on you presently?" Not currently. I keep it at home. I don't keep it here. They've been to the communications tower before. Currently, they are all at their ship, but... I don't keep anything precious on me or here. Well, I'll need some time with it. Do we think we have a few hours? Even the night? We don't travel at night here. I would suggest you you stay with me. You look like you have seen a very, a very disruptive journey. Have it's been you ripped open a portal in space time and went through the hell dimension. We infiltrated a giant trash mountain and saw the nuclear explosion that caused the end of. Um, Hundreds or thousands of little bandicoot armadillo people. Mm, just another day. <laughs> Unfortunately, we have a lot of these days, my friend. <laughs> we would much appreciate the respite. Uh, you all tell stories that rival the great sand hunters. Uh, I can't wait to hear more. I would be happy to take you home, pour you a drink, and we can talk. Rhett, was it? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I would be honored for you to look at the cloaking device and, and see if there's any way you could expand its capabilities so I, I could get us to the ship unseen. All right. Well, lead the way. I'm chuckled, by the way. <laughs> nice to meet you. I've heard so much about you. Oh. Like what? Uh, the, like you needed help? <laughs> like the Thorians were attacking? And that uh, you were a good friend of Kavir. And because you're a good friend of Kavir, I trust you. Well, thank you, Chuckles. It is uh, a pleasure to meet you. Yeah, don't worry. All the stories about Motlians are true, but I'm different. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to worry about me at all. <laughs> Your children are safe. They're not going to get plucked and eaten. His eyes are getting That's bigger. That's crazy talk. Why would you think that? His eyes go from Labouche to Chuckles to Dandy to Rat to Pike. You have certainly begun to run with an interesting crowd. You have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> um... And he will take you all along uh, to his home. So you walk back out into the town, uh, and you'll see um, walking with Raish, still people move away and hide. Uh, this is clearly a, uh, a group of people that have seen some horrors recently and are very skittish around anyone uh, who looks and presents like an outsider, which would be most of you. Um, walking confidently with Raish, they, they don't quite as close the doors uh, in your face as often, but they very uh, quickly will move away from you back into homes uh, and just, just firmly stay out of your way. Um, you make your way to a quaint little uh, tavern you open it up, uh, you walk inside, and a very modest uh, bar sits on the edge just as you enter, a collection of tables, uh, and then stairs leading upwards at the back of the hall. Please, can I get anyone anything? A stiff drink for a journey, perhaps? I certainly wouldn't say no. One of the usual. For me and my friend Labouche here. Excellent. 
Uh, and he will go uh, and and grab a uh, bottle of whiskey from the bar and he'll take out a couple of glasses, he'll take a rag and just kind of like quickly wipe out the inside uh, and then pour them each uh, and pass them around. Do you have any root beer? <laughs> uh... Dandy and I have had a really rough time. We need a strong mug of root beer. <laughs> take the edge off, you know? Sure. I will uh, check. Do you have any pie? Pie? No. We have very little food here. Well, if you wanted pie, you'd have to add... I can give I can give meat pie. You don't have to have him for pie. I do not know if I want pie. Ch- Chuckles is very offended she's asked anybody else for pie. I do not know if I want your pie today. I mean, yeah, there could be horrible effect. The dungeon method is going to roll on a table. And it probably happens to you. I will have a root beer. <laughs> yeah, so okay. Uh, and he goes back behind the bar and he takes out two mugs and he kind of shoots like a quick glance and he takes the exact same whiskey bottle and he just pours them into the mugs instead uh, and brings them back over. Uh, here, root beer. Oh, wow. This smells spicy. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait for Magfest. <laughs> this is going to be like from Roger Rabbit when he takes the fucking shot and he just turns into a fucking steam whistle. <laughs> <laughs> I don't drink when I work, but uh, maybe once I t- turn in for the night. Understood. Hey, Raish, do you know what they want? The Saurians? I'm just gonna like chug my room. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't. Uh, wow. Ah. Uh, yes. They showed up just a couple days ago. They, we didn't understand what they wanted at first. We thought they were here just to, to kill everyone. You have to understand, no, none of us have seen Saurians before. We thought they were just ghost stories. Something that li- lives at the edge of the universe to scare you, to, to uh, pull the covers up at night. And then their, their giant temple touched down. They destroyed the, the empire in moments. They had something that blocked our communications. We tried to call the empire to help, to send a large force to push them away, but we couldn't call out. The only thing I, would, I could do is get out one recorded the message try and reach you all and and luckily it made it but not in time do you know if they know you called us? I don't believe so I hid the signal embedded in other outgoing script routine stuff I, I don't think it looked like anything made it out probably why we made it down here. It's also probably why there was no one to receive us. And you're saying their ship is a temple? I've never seen anything like it before, but it, it is a giant tiered structure. I, I immediately just kind of like side glance over to Rhett, and then I look at Dandy. I take another long drag <laughs> on my cigarette. How far is the, their ship from us? Like, we can't see it looking out. You can't see it looking out, but from the scan that Rhett did when you landed, you know it was, like, roughly, it's over the next dune. It's roughly, like, it's, it's a 20-minute ride away um, if you were to head straight there. Uh, just one temple ship? Yes. Just one touched down, but it held a force that was more than enough. Well, one's better than dozens. Why was this planet so lightly garrisoned? The the Empire had... I mean, we are automated, effectively. 
you will know this Kavir, but there are terrible storms that strike this place. And when the energy hits the sand, it creates gems of a kind, crystals. Long ago, the, the Empire found that they could use such crystals to power their engines. Their entire armada works off of the fuel source that's built here. And it's been that way for years, ages. The Empire never expects anyone to strike at them. They had a force here just to keep us in line, just to keep us working, but not to push back an invading race of alien boogeymen. Our people are normally very peaceful. What I can do, they can't do. So fighting back wasn't really an option. And now our planet looks the way that it does. For me, it's been all my life, but the Empire did this. When you say uh, our people can't do what I can do. For, for the briefest moment, you'll catch almost a, like, just a, a glimpse of uh, a mix of, uh, like, jealousy and regret or disappointment off the face of uh, Raish. It's for a split second. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, I don't want to perhaps think of the worst that could happen. But surely the Thorians don't think if it's this important to the Empire that they can hold it with just a small force of a hundred troops. So does that mean that this was just a strike force and that more temple ships are coming? And then that would also mean that well, as soon as the Empire knows they've lost contact and their fuel sources are going to dry up, they're going to bring an entire fleet, and so we're going to be caught in the middle of a war between the two major superpowers of the galaxy? Is that what you're implying? I'm about to be Reynolds again. <laughs> <laughs> they can't take me alive. I'm going to Reynolds out. I... I do. All, all I know is that they made it so we couldn't call for help. The second they landed, the Empire as of yet does not know that they have been cut off from us. And their cadence for pickups is we wouldn't expect them back for 30 days from now at least. Whoa. As for whether the Saurians plan to send more of their destructive force uh, I do not know I, I, it could be that at this point they want to just they want to take what they can for whatever purpose they see it could be that they want to steal what fuel, what power what energy they can get their hands on in that time to embolden an even greater force to spread back throughout the galaxy it's told by our people that eons ago, before the Empire, that the Saurians were all throughout space, that they ruled and the Empire pushed them back to the edges. It could be that they want to bring back a more primal time. Yeah, I mean, I think Chuckles is right. If they understand the implications of what they're fucking doing, cutting off the fuel of the entire armada of the Empire, and they probably don't. They probably think, oh, there's natural resources, let's take it. But if this gets out to the Empire, then they're going to come with a full fucking force. Every gun they have, and this planet will turn into a glorified imperial mining facility. The Empire's had its way with this planet for long enough. Whether it's the Saurians or the Empire, we're getting rid of them. Once and for all. At least until we can get away. 
Sandy's just like looking out the window, at, trying to see if I can see the ship and realizing I can't because there's a dune there. And I'm, I'm just imagining in my head, silently, the temple that we saw that I was on top of a while back. Mm. And I'm just kind of like thinking about that, getting nervous and confused. Roll an arcana check. Oh, no. Twist it. Yeah. Yeah. Let's get a little twist, twist, twist action. Twist Come on. There we go. Five, 19. Big money. Yeah. yeah. You yeah. reflect on the moments since you've been here. The feeling of this earth as you've stepped on it compared to any other planet that you've walked. You look at the, the carnage that the Saurians caused at the Empiric Outpost. You sit in the window and you look out in the distance. You can't see the ship from where you are, but all of these elements make you feel simultaneously calm and a kindred, a kindredness and extreme unease. I will have drank in my drink, mm -hmm. and I am keeping an eye out on the streets. <laughs> and I am listening to my friend Kavir um, talk about vengeance against the Saurians and keeping the Empire out and all of these very ambitious, lofty things. And just feeling especially quiet and pensive and wanting to support, but I haven't said a word. Mm. 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 It's also, I think yeah. he, he would recognize that it's also very uncharacteristic of me to be this mm. vengeful. Or investing, <laughs> right? Yeah. 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 Um, but I'm letting him catch up with an old friend, and uh, <laughs> I want to make sure that if there's a sign of danger, I'm the first to notice. Mm. So that's okay. What, that's what I'm doing. Um, you're at the window, standing uh, vigil, as it were, as you uh, hear the conversation developing behind you, creating space for your friend to settle in to a familiar place. I, uh, I kind of look around, and all of a sudden, I realize that Labouche isn't with us, like in in the sort of immediate area. And I call him over, and I said, Rish. All this time I've been away, I have to tell you, I wouldn't have made it if it wasn't for Labouche. He's uh, probably the only person outside of you that I trust. And it's, uh, it's thanks well. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Shots Sorry. fired. Let me, let me rephrase that. Shots fired. He's probably the only person outside of you that I can trust as much as I trust you. And the rest of my crew, of course, I trust them with my life. But Labouche, I trust him the way I trust you. And uh, he's probably the reason why I'm able to come back here today. Thank you for the drink. Yes, I'm glad you enjoyed it. And thank you for keeping one of my oldest friends safe for this journey. I know it has not been easy for you, the way that you all speak. I don't have anything on my person for you. I uh, wish I uh, could do something, given what happened to your family? Please, we are a people of minimal things. What, the fact that you are here, the, the fact that you are willing to help, e even if you cannot, that, that, simple, that, that simple task uh, means more than you could ever know. If there's anything else I can do, I'm no tinkerer, but I am happy to help. I think uh, I think crushing skulls would be plenty. She's very good at that. <laughs> <laughs> I do this. You don't hear a sound of like knuckles cracking. <laughs> I've learned that that gesture means threatening. <laughs> Speaking of, given that I am a tinker. I would love to, to, to tink, so to speak. <laughs> yes. Uh, well, uh, what me, I mean to say uh, is, uh, please, could, 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 you, could you show me towards your device and I can get to work? 
I would be happy to. Come with me just to my office, just off to the, the side behind the bar. Uh, it's, a, it's a quaint workshop. I don't, you look like you have more tools at your disposal than I do, but uh, hopefully you can make use of what I have so far. And, uh, it, it will be enough to guide us tomorrow. All right. Let's see what we're working with. And I'll follow him to the workshop. And he will lead you back there. And everyone else can uh, continue to enjoy their drinks. Dandy, I won't even make you roll for it. You're drunk. Um, I'm drunk? You slammed your whiskey. Root beer. It was whiskey. <laughs> it was root beer. <laughs> he went back and got mugged. You and poured whiskey you ordered. in it. And oh, then I brought no. it back. And that's why Chuckles said it smells spicy. Oh, and no. then he proceeded to go, I slammed the entire drink. Without I followed suit. I can't get drunk. <laughs> Damn it! Yeah, she, she forged I'm, by war. I'm a, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm a Did you even pay attention to the well, blood drinking war episode? War. Yeah. You're not technically. Uh, if, technically, yeah. If, I'm, so, I'm into poison. DM Fiat, you could, you know. Yeah. You and Chuckles are drunk. What? Yeah. <laughs> You're like a magical whiskey and wine blood. Yeah. Yeah. Blood wine. Yeah, whiskey and blood yeah. wine. You know, on a desert planet. Whoa. That's some warm. Fight! <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. I thought I was Warfoot, but actually, <laughs> whoa, oh, here we go. Don Mazzetti, Don Mazzetti, yeah, right. <laughs> this was supposed to be root beer. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, it's the best whiskey on the planet. <laughs> oh, what the hell? Whoa. Do you know the only solution is to have more? <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm going to. I'm like, I'm on a mission to just get hammered. Yeah. Um, <laughs> if and you're if you're getting up for another round, I'll have one. Absolutely. I don't even get up. I just send the sands to grab oh, the and then bring Love it that. Out. And then pour it for us. And they do so. They <laughs> swirl over behind the bar and wrestle on a particularly uh, enjoyable whiskey and come over and the sands will pour uh, slowly and elegantly to top off both of your glasses. Oh. I think I need to lay off the... <laughs> <laughs> oh, the Motlin. Ah, uh, uh, oh, the discordant. <laughs> Wait, did he, did he, did he go? <laughs> Wait, you got any blue milk? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, plenty of blue milk. I'll just pour him some more whiskey. Is the blue milk? <laughs> well, that's a weird shade of blue. <laughs> <laughs> it's just whiskey, it's brown. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Don't trust them. They lie to us. They lie to us about the, the power converters. <laughs> Consultation. <laughs> we might need to infiltrate the Saurian temple in this. hours. Yes. You are weakening our allies. Whoa. It's, it is not good. It's I feel okay. uneasy this tastes and like shit. happy at the same time. All right. If you don't want to have the whiskey, I will have more of the whiskey. And then I'm going to pass it to you. Pike would probably have more of the whiskey. That is working. Lebush. For all drinking whiskey. I'll, I'll, <laughs> you'll just see a tendril like go into the spout. And you'll see like a Twizzler straw. straw. Just like That's pull in. It like turns into its own vein almost going up into the, into the arm. And I'll just, you can see that it's just like blobbing inside of my, uh, my head. Like a lava lamp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Occasionally really like good. my actual nervous mm. system will like touch it and it'll reduce a little bit. <laughs> I have what I need. I know you said that. <laughs> I know you said that. Uh, I'm talking to Rach. I know you said that uh, you don't have much food on this planet. So I, I wanted to. Uh, I wanted to uh, share what I got. I'm gonna turn around and ask Chuckles. I'm gonna say, uh, you, can you open my compost bucket? I've been making some sauerkraut. <laughs> it's fermented. And now it's extra fermented and spicy. <laughs> Whoa. Please grab it. I'm hungry. Chuckles just vomits. <laughs> Okay, I got it. I grabbed a toaster <laughs> from the counter. <laughs> I go, ah, that feels good. God, what a brave exact, little guy. It looks exactly like the brave little toaster. <laughs> yeah, it's got a little button on it, a single dial. Oh gosh, now I have 
existential dread and question my self worth. The fuck out of here! What the hell, Chuckles? That was our food. I'm more forged, I need food. Well, I'm sure we'll get some blue milk soon. <laughs> Raish, do you have any of those, um. I'm just gonna fall asleep for a second. <laughs> and then I wake up at the, um. The rolls. The rolls oh, that we used to eat. Oh, the dried fruit rolls. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Give, sour cherry is still your favorite? Give, always. Yes, yeah, as you yes. remember. We, uh, we, <laughs> have, uh, we have them here, yes. Yeah. Perfect, perfect. Dandy, these are best. Uh, and he produces a uh, selection of what is, is certainly like natural fruits that looks like it's been uh, crushed and molded into almost like a paste flattened out and dried uh, and there are apricot uh, sour cherry um, persimmon pers- persimmon dates you trying to in- induce yeah. 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 labor here <laughs> space <Yeah>. blue raspberry <laughs> space blue raspberry is one of them uh, because it's a fantasy world black raspberries as well um, <laughs> And yes, he produces them out if anyone would uh, care to enjoy uh, fruits. And Rhett, I will just have you make a uh, tech, an engineering handling check. <coughs> Ooh. We hear an explosion. 19? <laughs> 19. Golden. Um, Perfect. As uh, Raish walks you into the shop, you see, as he described, a quaint little workspace. Uh, There's definitely a strewn uh, what looks like just spare parts hanging all around. Um, Very modest tools at the table. Uh, Just a thin steel uh, slate desk uh, that you sit down at. Uh, He produces the cloaking device, uh, which you quickly and expertly inspect. You Mm -hmm. know Mm -hmm that you can improve its yield and improve its coverage. And it would take you probably, <clears throat> not through the night, but well into the night. Yep, that'll do. Uh, I'll be here. You can go on back to your friend and uh, let him know that uh, I'll, uh, they should go to sleep without me. You think that you can, you think that you can fix it or increase it? I think, given what you have here, it's a great start. I got all the tools that I need, and I'll tap my uh, my my pack. Uh, and it looks like you got some spare parts around the workshop, so I think I'll have what it takes to at least get the uh, six of us through. I am very glad to have you here. Brett, thank you. And uh, if there's anything you need, uh, sustenance, uh, whiskey when you are done, perhaps. The whiskey is really good. <laughs> I will uh, I will not sleep until you do. You simply call, and I will offer you whatever I can. All right. Well, you know, now that you mention it, uh, you know how to make a cowboy? Uh, I'm sure I could figure it out if you tell me the ingredients. It's uh, one part whiskey, one part cream. <laughs> if you got cream. Oh. The yeah, heavier the better. I think I could find some, yes. They have blue milk. <laughs> <laughs> blue milk can do. It's also just oh. whiskey. <laughs> Uh, he, he steps away for the moment and you hear uh, like, uh, like a clanking behind the bar. Uh, as he mixes some elements together and he brings you back uh, his best attempt at making a cowboy. Uh, here, enjoy. All right, I'll just sit back. Yeah. I'll take a tiny, tiny sip. I'll set it down and then I'll look and zzz, my eye will sort of extend out and my arms will sort of come through and I'll start to kind of tinker on it. And you just, you, you dial in. Like everything is locked out to you at this point. Even with his presence lingering for an additional moment, you don't, uh, that does not uh, pierce your focus. 
uh, you are into this tech until it is complete. Uh, and Rish steps back out to the table. There's just a knob that says coverage. And... <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Four hours to myself. <laughs> Did uh, Rhett say he needed anything? Well, he asked for a cowboy. Uh, but I made uh, I made the drink, and uh, that is it. I think he has everything that he needs. He seemed very well equipped. All right. I can't believe he poured cream into his whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's been doing that as long as I've known him. As smart as he is, that seems pretty silly. <laughs> Red, why does he call it the cowboy? Uh, great question. I think it's just the name of the drink. Why did they call it the cowboy? <laughs> I have no idea. I had not heard about it before uh, myself. It is not a drink that is uh, native to us. Well, people like what they like. You can't yuck somebody's yum. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Go outside, get them cool off. <laughs> you be careful, there's danger out there. It's okay, I'm just gonna enjoy the serene sunset on the desert. <laughs> just don't go outside the walls. <laughs> you walk up a bluff, and there are two su- setting suns. <laughs> the <horizon>. <laughs> <laughs> third one, the third one coming in. up. <laughs> it's just never <laughs> night. <laughs> I'll sit there, I'll put a knee up. <laughs> On like a low sand wall, and then a clown horn will be. (laughs) 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 You guys are a mess. (laughs) (laughs) You make it outside just in time to watch the sunset, and it has. Uh, it's now transitioning into night, and the temperature has dropped uh, drastically. Uh, as you look out, you can see a uh, very subtle uh, movement on the horizon, very far out. But nothing that causes you any concern beyond thinking. Maybe the movement of one of those giant sand creatures. <gasps> I'm gonna pull out a really blocky 70s style, like white uh, binoculars. I don't know how to work this shit. (laughs) (laughs) I'm just gonna gonna look really hard. Do your eyes not extend out? Oh, yeah, no. (laughs) I'm gonna attempt to see. I see if I see movement, I'm gonna attempt to see like does it look like a, a war band, does it look like a worm's heading in this direction? I'm trying to keep an eye out for danger as I'm starting to sober up quickly given my extreme motley and metabolism. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, you do so. Your eyes extend out of your uh, cupped hands and you look out into the distance. Roll a <laughs> perception check for me. I wanna be sober too. <laughs> <laughs> No, you, you, your ass is open. You're just picking sauerkraut. I'm gonna. Handful. I'm gonna use two twists. I don't have two twists. I'm gonna use three twists. I'm gonna use three twists. Three One twists. Twist. Three twists. Pull twist. them out. Okay. Oh. I didn't roll higher than an eight. Oh wow. Ooh. Uh, you are drunk. Yeah. <laughs> you look out. Your eyes extend out yeah, through your hands. Nine. Uh, but with your chaotic, drunken nature, uh, even though it's starting to fade, uh, as you look out, your eyes warble and look in all different directions as you're struggling to focus. Um, you still, however, I will say, catch on the horizon, uh, what looks, uh, very faintly, you see disappearing over the dune towards the direction, uh, Towards the direction of the the ship, it looked like you may have saw a uh, Saurian heading in that direction, away from the town. Okay. I'll walk back in. Is everything okay? Uh, I think there's some Saurians, but they're not coming in this direction. But they're there. 
They're doing something sinister. Well, what are they doing? No. Oh. <laughs> we don't know. <laughs> They're probably stealing all of the, the fuel crystals caused by the great sandstorms. Why would they come for them now? Kavir was saying they could have come at any time. We don't know what their plans are. They've been pushed back by the Empire and have, have really lurked in seething hatred for years. The stories are true. <laughs> and then suddenly, it wouldn't be surprising if suddenly with the geopolitical climate of the galaxy <laughs> being the most unstable that it's been in centuries, mm -hmm. perhaps this is their time to strike to perhaps reclaim what was once theirs. <laughs> Or oh, I don't know, they're doing dino shit. I know, I'm a clown. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> wow, Kavir, your friend is very smart. <clears throat> I Red, do yeah. think they, they were doing dino shit. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they're very, they're very, they, they, they have their qualities, yes. Did that stand reason? What did you say? Does that stand reason after everything that Danny was talking about on top of that pyramid? I wasn't. I had lost track of what he was saying like halfway through, so all I caught at the end was doing dino shit. Yeah. I'm still, like, very much that. So, <laughs> dino. Uh, yes. Sure. Yes. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. If yeah. you saw the one of them uh, at the edge, they were probably just rotating out the scouts or or something like that. Just the edge of their encampment, over the, the pass of the dune. Well, when, with Brett's engineering ability, they can have a million scouts and they won't see it's coming. And then we'll... <laughs> they're gonna go yes. extinct. They... <laughs> we will <laughs> them all. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, I'm going to sleep. We have a big day of subterfuge and bushwhacking. So <laughs> I gotta get my uh, my clown sleep. We do. Anybody who would like to go to bed, we have... Uh, I have extra beds upstairs. Whoa. I can show you through them. You are more than welcome to stay here tonight. And uh, rest easy. Thank you for your hospitality. I cannot repay you with credit because I've been cut off by... Rhett <laughs> and the rest of the crew. That's but true. I but I can ask what's your favorite animal? Well, uh, my favorite animal is the mighty falcon. The falcon? That's also what Kavir said. That's They're pretty cool. cool. <laughs> the mighty falcon? It's gonna look like an eagle. <laughs> well that's not the falcon at all. Fuck <laughs> cool. No, I'll pull out like a light blue and like kind of cream colored balloons and I'll do this. Fine, yeah, the beak is a little bit down. You can tell <laughs> it would have been an eagle, would have looked different. Here's the balloon animal. Oh, Thank wow. you for your, for your hospitality. Well, this is very kind of you. Thank you. And it is I who, who am appreciative of you being here. Hospitality is the least that I can offer you. Thank you. I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> oh, you have one of those fancy new coffee makers that they found? <laughs> it's just right on the edge of the bar. It was right next to the toaster. I'm surprised what? that you missed it. <laughs> Gosh, you got you got to get everything out here. That's pretty impressive. Okay. Well, we're a smuggler's planet, so That's true. we, we get a lot of things. You yeah, know? I was going to say, I guess with the trade embargo and all of the tariffs, it would have been very expensive to get one here at these prices. Especially with space inflation. But I guess if you are skilled smuggler, it would be hard to get that kind of contraband. Anyway, I'm going to go to sleep. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> and I go to bed. Um, I'm going to recognize after the compost bucket was taken from me hopefully that sobers me up a little bit but if not totally i'm casting lesser restoration on myself to, oh. to sober myself mm. so that i can ask race a, que race a question and get back to my mind you do so so i do so and i'm going to ask have um the the would you call them stones that were harvested from the planet crystals gems crystals, gems, crystals, gems. Yeah. Okay, gems. gems crystals the gems on this planet what color are they? They end up as a sort of uh, 
white, almost like diamonds, jagged in shape, like uh, explosions of light. Whoa. That is interesting. That is all I wanted to ask. I'm going to bed now. Good night. Good night. I will keep watch on this floor, and I will put my helmet upside down onto the bar and I will take my armor pieces and I will find somewhere behind the bar to sort of gently stack them. And then I will schloop into my, uh, my bucket and um, a tendril will come out and grab one of the black raspberry scones and, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it'll just be floating there in the center uh, around with this netting of eyes and nerves and uh, I, I will go to sleep here in the sense that uh, I would hope that I could feel any tremors or anything mm. coming through the space unless they were especially sneaky uh, to protect my friends who are sleeping upstairs. You do this and you would find a space behind the bar easily to put your armor up, to lay at its <coughs> edge, uh, connected, sit, sitting on top of the, the bar top close to the door, uh, you would definitely get the sense that should the door itself even open, uh, you would very easily be alerted uh, immediately. And probably if anything kind of like heavy were to approach, you would feel that movement coming towards you. Okay. Feeling this security, I know it's time for bed and I'll turn my eyeballs off and then do that. <clears throat> Raish, thank you for your hospitality and taking us in. As I said, it is my pleasure. I, I didn't know what to expect when I sent that message. It was a last effort. I, I had hoped, but I thought that all hope was lost. It is truly my pleasure to have you here. I don't sleep much, so I'm gonna leave you guys to it. I'm gonna take the rest of my drink, check on Rhett, make sure things are going well, and I'll see you in the morning. Good night. I'll leave you two to it. All right? Thank you, my friend. Cheers. 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 I take a, a small drag, and I go off to where I saw uh, Rhett working. I would just keep him company until he's ready to go to bed as well, and that would be it for me. Make sure that things are going well. Let's see if he needs anything. And you do so. You join Rhett in the room, uh, and you've seen him in this kind of form before. You know that uh, you being in the vicinity uh, he is he is a laser dialed into his work, and it's not your intention to interrupt, just to be on hand. I would in, say it's very common for me when it when he doesn't mind for me to just enjoy watching him work mm -hmm. silently while I kind of maybe meditate or think about things and just keep him give him silent company. You find a corner of the room that you're in, and you uh, move to one foot, lean back into its edge, and you sit. Uh, or you stand, you just rest there, uh, enjoying the sound of the uh, tinkering as your friend works. Yeah, as we normally do when I hear Pike come in, I just sort of know that it's him based on uh, his footsteps. So I'll just go. Hmm. Uh, you would hear the uh, the, like, the clink of the glass as I kind of raise it to you. <laughs> and, and give you like a, n a silent nod as I drink from the, the cup. Like walk past you and just like find a comfortable place to plop, prop up against the wall and just, you know, again, give you silent company. We don't need words. Um, and while I'm working, I would have like any kind of monitor, like Rhapsody, like stats mm -hmm. displayed on my, um, on my arms, making sure that Hank's okay and that the ship's okay mm -hmm. uh, as I work. As you, you have your, your readout, and on the left you see Hank's adorable face with his tongue sticking out, and oh. all signs read, all signs read, all gauges read green. <laughs> Good work, buddy. And yeah, I would just, I would sort of silently uh, work into the evening, um, even if it means not sleeping at all. I'm happy to do that as long as I, you know, mm -hmm. get my eight hours of light activity for yep. long rest. Yep. Uh, and you do so. Uh, as much as I've had to drink at this point, now that it's just me and Raish, uh, I've entered sad, regretful bro drunk. Oh, no! <laughs> Been there. <laughs> Been there. You've yeah. gone from, woo, yeah. to being like, oh, no. Oh, oh, oh. What if I, where did that yeah. go wrong? <laughs> where did it all go wrong? Um, slightly more composed I was, but definitely oh, no. in his feelings. Uh, Raish, I, I know it's been a long time, and... 
I'm sorry I wasn't here to protect us, protect you, your family. After, after what happened, after Soraya, I, I couldn't let anyone else get hurt and I thought leaving was the best solution. My friend, stop. I understand why you had to leave. The Empire searching for you. We never expected you to stay. And it's not anybody's responsibility to protect anyone else. It was for us to, to stand against them. And I, I regret having to call you back, but I just I didn't know what else to do. But it is not your fault that these monsters showed up here. And Soraya was not your fault. And I'm gonna look down sort of at my hands and the, the hourglasses. How can you, it was, it was me. It was, it was this power, this gift and curse. It, it, it's all from this. It all, everything started with this. Of course I had to be here. It's, it's my, I, I don't know. I, I feel like I shouldn't have left. I won't lie to you. There are times where I wish that I had been chosen by Zaman instead of you, but I think it was the correct choice he made. And you were simply doing what anyone would have done with your abilities. You were trying to save her. And you just, you went back too far. I won't let it happen again, but I will do whatever I need to to free the rest of our people and this planet from anyone who's wanting to cause us harm. And I will come back. I will be home again. And I will be at your side as we do this together. We'll sort of high five and embrace into a, into a hug. We bro hug. We bro hug. Um, I clearly haven't done this in a while, um, so I think I'm also going to need to head to sleep, but is there anything else you can tell us, either tell me, that might help us tomorrow? I think I have a sense of the layout of their, uh, the insides of their temple. They have come to me and though we don't speak their language, it is, it is uh, snarling, snapping. Uh, you, you get a sense for what they want when they cut down everyone around them. But they don't know well they had, uh, they fiddle with the communication towers that I too took something from them. And I have, uh, I have, as you said, the, the, the schematics, as it were, the layout inside. And I think, uh, I think I understand where their core is. And I think, foolishly, they store the power crystals they have been accumulating in the same space. And if you can, maybe your friend, maybe your, your party, destroy it. I think uh, uh, you could, uh, as you say, make it all to go boom. If there's anyone that can do that, it's this group. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, my friend. Thank you. It's, it means a lot. And I, I wouldn't have come back for anyone else. It's good to see you again. And you, my friend. And I've stayed at his house plenty of times, and I never sleep in a bed. I just always end up passing out on the couch. <laughs> so I'm gonna do that as Classic. just like almost mm. autopiloting over to mm. what would be kind of the couch and just like base planning down to sleep it off. <laughs> sleep well, my friend. I will wait for your ally. I don't even respond to that. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone enjoys a long rest. Yes. Yay! Thank goodness. Uh, as you sleep, uh, Kavir, you hear, uh, you don't dream, but you catch fragments of a scene from your past. Your friend, wounded, on the ground, bleeding, 
but savable, healable. You see your arms stretched out in front of you. You see the familiar glow of your tattoos. You hear familiar words echo in your ears. Time runs out for us all. And as your arms glow, the figure in front of you disappears. And everybody awakes. <clears throat> All right. I think it's done. I would say that you were firmly capable of accomplishing your task somewhere in the region of 2, 1 2 a.m. You're far more... Uh, capable than Raish at dealing with what you're uh, working on. And though over a long period of time he was able to develop uh, a cloaking device that worked for just him uh, at a moderate level, in that span of time you've been able, in just mere hours compared to his months working on this, you have been able to uh, quintuple its capacity. Uh, and increase its effectiveness uh, as it shimmers. And you were able, you did in fact find the dial and you cranked it to 11. Uh, and you were able to do so by uh, about, I'd say 1.30 uh, and you were able to, uh, should you have chosen to do so, find yourself a place to sleep. Yeah, I would have. If I felt like I could have gotten a little bit of sleep, I would have. Mm. Uh, all right. So with this, I think we can take one of those things out there and get all six of us on it, cloaked through whatever scanners they have. Once we're inside, I'm not sure how well it's going to work, but it'll at least get us to the, 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 the temple ship. Nice work, big guy. That's impressive. Didn't and, uh, doubt you for a second. Uh, another thing, uh, Dandy. If they happen to recognize or see what you are, they may single you out, target you. Uh, just given your past, your history. And so, uh, put this on. And I'll pass you this, like, little, almost like a little, like, smartwatch version of my screen. Oh, oh cool. Uh, nice. I pulled my personal cloaking uh, tech out of this and uh, put it into this. So, just so you're a little harder to get a good look at. Thank you. Why do you think they'll recognize me? <sighs> because their kind is what made you. And when we found you, it wasn't too dissimilar to what we saw back at the barracks. Uh, we don't need to get into it, but if you're some kind of weapon they created, or you have some kind of grander purpose, if they know that, uh, they're gonna want you back. I, I want to ask, why didn't did you not tell me this before, but it doesn't really matter now. I think in terms of what Pike and I did to recover you from that ship. We don't know exactly what happened. We have presumptions. We have deductions. And I can't say for sure one way or another. Maybe we'll learn more on the ship, but I just want you to know that your safety is our top priority. Thank you. I'm just gonna like look out the window again and I'm putting the watch on or the device that you gave me on. Um, and I'm just gonna kind of like look away from everybody. And I'm still thinking about like the temple and me on top of it. Is there anything else that we should know about that Dandy should know? That you've kept from her when we were gonna go faith the being that made her and, and go be in a, a 
spaceship of the thing technology that did all of this? That's very powerful and badass, I might add. <laughs> Look, I... There's no secrets between Beth chums. I don't want to scare anybody. All right. What do you think, Pike? I think that it was a pretty rough few days. That's what concerns me. That's all. We're not trying to keep secrets. It's like he said. We just don't want to scare anybody. Not before we have to go into the heart of this. Look, do you remember when you first woke up as yourself and we were there and I was looking down and I said, well, ain't that just dandy? And then you decided Take that as your name? Yes, I do remember. I'm still looking away from you, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so on that day, so hurt. Pike and I were on a bounty to uh, collect some highly classified cargo. Uh, we stumbled upon the ship and it was dead in the water. Scanned it, no life forms. Uh, just floating in space. And when we came on board, it was a bloodbath. The whole crew was torn apart. Uh, there were claw marks, teeth marks, through the whole ship. We've both seen our fair share of messed up stuff, but this was something else. And all we found in that ship was you. Passed out, asleep, deactivated, whatever you want to call it. And right when you woke up, I thought we were done for. Your eyes were glowing red. All your gems were glowing red. And for a split second, I thought you were looking at me with the most furious anger and vengeance. And then all of a sudden, you just changed to how you are now. Blue. And... I don't know if that was you that did that to the crew. I don't know if it was some kind of self-defense mechanism. But with whatever kind of gym magic they were using to shoot laser beams and fly through the stars, uh, they stuffed you to the gills with it. And, uh, there's a reason why this was classified cargo. And so, anyway, I'm not saying that's going to happen. I'm not saying, who knows, maybe there was another dinosaur on board. And just, they escaped before we got there. I just want to make sure that you know that that's not you. And that we're going to make sure that that doesn't happen again. I'm still looking away, and I'm going to say, um, I just have two questions for you. Did the ship you recovered me on look like a temple? Still looking over. No. It was an old freighter. I don't know where they got you, where they found you. The entire bounty was basically one line. I'm going to turn towards you and say, uh, do you trust me? Of course I trust you. And I'm going to look back away. A tear comes down my face, <laughs> a single tear. 
You can be mad at me. That's in your right. As long as you're also mad at Pike. <laughs> a, 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 wry, a wry smile will uh, will kind of come across my face, and I'll chime in and say, "And besides, Dandy, if we really didn't think you were safe, we'd have sold you for spare parts years ago." <laughs> she glows red. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I am not mad. I just. I, I have never known who I am. All I have ever known of who I am is with you and this family. And I do not know if I trust myself. Well, how about this? We trust you. And we might Oof. learn more about who you are in that temple ship, and if you start feeling a certain way, just let us know. And we'll make sure we help you however we can. Okay. We're with you. We all trust you. I mean, gosh, I'm more of a risk than you are. And everyone's still really nice to me. You've always been really nice to me, and I could go cuckoo bananas and go clown mode. But you don't hold that against me on my horrible, discordant, demonic persuasions. And what I'm trying to say is, we all got each other's back, and just because there are a bunch of hulked out dinos in there with whatever kind of tech they have, now that we know what to look for, we can preemptively strike. And if anyone's like, oh look, get her, we'll cut their heads off. Who can do that? Who can cut someone's heads off? <laughs> Will, uh... <laughs> will say LaBouche, get him! And I will. I will get them. Okay. All right. Uh, I'll go get it fashioned to the skiff, or whatever you want to call it. And, uh, I'll be out there when you're ready. So I'll walk outside, and I'll just get it uh, fashioned and set up so that it's sort of ready to go. Mm -hmm. uh, and Rachel have been out there the whole time, not a part of this intimate uh, <laughs> moment. Uh, uh, this cool seems guy. like a you thing. He's baking uh, more fruit. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> more fruit snacks uh, for anyone. Uh, and you do so. You fashion it to the to the skiff. Easily, you get it uh, on board, connected into power components, uh, and you know that it is ready to go. And you get the sense that should you choose, you can make your way. Shall we make our way? I think it's time. Um, with this watch that you gave me, am I just invisible? Is it like activated whenever I want? For for the sake of mechanically, you have advantage on stealth checks. Okay. Yeah. So this is. Um, and you can still see me. Like you guys know where I am. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not like you're invisible. Got the it. the idea is that it just makes you a little sort of harder to kind of spot or sense. Okay. And if you are feeling a little bit more vulnerable, I could give you the same kind of treatment that I gave Kavir when he became Kasru. If you'd like to if you'd like to get yourself a new look, new you. I'm gonna be there like <laughs> exactly <laughs> I'm looking at them. Um I do not think so, but thank you, Chuckles. Okay, I'll put down my Groucho marks. <laughs> put it back in my hat. <laughs> she could have been Shrandy. <laughs> Shrandy. 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 It's me, Shrandy, eh? Uh, well, you just let me know if you need it in a pinch. If you feel uncomfortable, we'll, we'll, we'll make you look like the opposite of a dino tech. Gotta figure out what that is. But. <laughs> Do I have any white gems on me? Um... Or, you know, diamonds, gem, clear, white, gem. No. I don't believe so. No? Well, um, is it time? How's everyone feeling? Terrible. But I'll manage. I feel good. I feel, I'll admit, 
I feel a lot better now that all those garrison soldiers are horribly killed. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good thing or not, but I'm a lot less afraid of what's out there than those, those people who would, you know, do far worse than these guys are going to do. All right. Another adventure awaits. Let's go remind the Saurians why they belong on the edge of the galaxy. Oh. Reach that was a pretty bad ass thing to say. I got to say way better at that than me. That was really cool. <laughs> okay. Wow. wow. Oh, yes. Well, on to the sand speeder. <laughs> <laughs> Breathe the sails. Yeah, we'd meet, hop on. Yeah, we'd meet everybody outside. We'd get ready mm -hmm. to go and suit up. Yeah. Do, do Rache and I both head towards the driver's seat? <laughs> <laughs> like it's uh, all, yeah, yes. Oh, uh, sure. Oh, yeah. I was thinking I, that that would. Oh, yeah. well. Do you, you know, it's your. It's I your. Mean, you go ahead. Yeah, well, it's, it's, you know, I mean, I'm the guest. Go, you yeah, go ahead. It's, it's, right, that it it's would fine. be awkward. Yes, if you were exactly. Right. Yes, yeah, yes, yes. Yeah. I will take this. Yeah, one. everyone knows who's the best. Oh, yeah. I made the cloaking for six, not seven. <laughs> Sorry. No, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Uh, and you away. Uh, you hit the sand speeder out. Uh, now a very familiar experience. It glides over the desert, uh, the sun now firmly hanging in the air, uh, and you race throughout these dunes over the, uh, towards the dune that Chuckles, you had seen uh, what you would know as a Saurian scout uh, on the edge now. Um, and uh, Rach will say, Rhett, deploy the stealth. You got it. <laughs> nice. Uh, and a shimmering, uh, like, ether curtain almost oh, falls so about nice. the sand speeder uh, as you all disappear uh, like dancing air in the desert. Uh, look away. And, uh, Avert your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Don't look over here. Look over here. <laughs> We're not over here. Uh, uh, and you soar, <laughs> you soar over the the dune ahead of you, uh, and you have so much speed as Raish begins to move uh, and operate the sail uh, that you take air for a moment as you crest over the dune, and it's when you see it for the first time, the Saurian warship planted in the ground. You are immediately stricken. Uh, with the scene in front of you on the planet of ice as you approached the tower where uh, where Rex was. Is uh, it identical or is it just architecturally similar? It is architecturally similar because the one you saw on the ice planet was covered in ice. And so you actually never mm. saw its true form. But you're stricken with a very familiar mm. sense <laughs> yeah, we as you maneuver towards the Saurian warship. I saw uh, its true form. You did. You saw yes. You saw its true form as the ice melted away as you were on top of it, uh, and so you would feel uh, you would feel that the two were extremely similar. Um, the sand speeder stealthed. He uh, Raish pilots it up to the edge of the temple. Okay. There is an entrance over here. It is hidden away. I found it on their, the plans that I took from them, the layout of their ship. I have it here. And he produces kind of like a, uh, like a little extendable uh, scroll that shimmers almost what looks like, kind of like schematics or br blueprints, but a layout of the ship in front of you. Um, we simply have to head over this way. I can take you to the door. I can open it and we can head inside. Are you ready? All right, let's do this. We're already this far. Yeah. Let's make them pay. For Gerube. For Gerube. He hops off the sand speeder. Mm -hmm. Uh, and you all start to move towards uh, what looks like a little water outlet coming off the side of the temple. Okay. You all follow a single file, but approach together uh, as you oh, walk to the, to the mouth of this entrance. 
I've seen them from the from the edge of the dune. They they never come through this way. They only ever go through uh, the the doors to the front. So if we go in here, we should be able to come upon them without any of them noticing us. Follow me very carefully. We don't know if they have any sort of defense. And as he takes one step forward, up from almost like stepping on a rake, up from the sand in front of him, shoots a large wooden pole with a jagged claw tied to the end of it. It shoots directly up and slams into his chest. Rish! Uh, uh, am I like right next to him? You probably him, would have been. You would have been right behind him. And as this happens, blood spray, spray splatters across your face. I'm gonna sort of run behind him and like catch him as he's falling he's back. He's pinned. Oh shit! Oh. Onto this thing. Oh, it's God. pierced him through his chest. No, no, oh, no, no, Rach, no, not you, not you too. And is there? Is, do I see anything? Like, is there any way to get this out of him? Dandy, can you help? Can you? Can you do something? Anything? I'm gonna run up and kneel down and cast, um... I'm gonna cast Healing Word. Uh... Yeah. And just, I'm gonna say to him... Roll a medicine check. Yeah. 17. With a 17, and your innate connection to life and energy, as you approach, and you see uh, the wound gaping from his chest, you understand that it is mortal. And no amount of magics at this point will turn back. I'm gonna hold my hand on, like, you know, on his body somewhere that doesn't hurt him, and turn to Kavir and say, it is the end. It, it, it can't be. No, not There's, this early. It, we just got here, there's no way. I can't, I can't lose him too. Get him off of this thing. I want to try to like at least help grab and pull him off of this like spike trap thing. If we can get him off. Um, yeah, I'd say that you can absolutely, as he's in there, you can start to uh, like shuffle him off of the spike. I'll grab the uh, uh, shaft of the spike thing, uh, and I'll attempt to just sort of break the trap so that it doesn't trigger or do anything like I'll pull it out or, or effectively ripping it apart while everyone drags. You grab away. the top section, you smash the bottom with your boot, and you snap it off. The pole made of simple wood, the end a jagged uh, raptor's talon. So do we get the sense that like basically they made this so that it was right at like Zorvoon heart heart uh, level level? Yeah. It is it is pretty obvious that it's intended to strike directly at the average like humanoid sternum. chest hu humanoid chest height. Jeez. <clears throat> Raish will reach up to Kavir and grab you by the front of your shirt and just say, I, I don't, what, watch out, trap. And that's where we're on the session. You son of a bitch. Oh! <laughs> you kill all the NPCs. <laughs> There's no, there's nothing more deadly oh. in advances than being one of Mesa's NPCs. Yes, seriously. <laughs> oh no.